dual recording and make sure it all works out. There was one episode. You got to get a little closer. Oh, okay. Slide two screen. Probably like. Oh, it's all good. I I do the same. Thing. I have to sit on my hand. Yeah. Yeah. Well, my whole family um, makes fun of me, and I, not just my family, my friends too. Everybody makes fun of me because I can't sit still. Right. I pace. Mm-hmm. So we had. My wife and I uh, lived in Lee Summit for a while, and then we moved out to this place in Blue Springs. It was this big house, and we renovated all of it and realized almost immediately, like, we should never own a big house. We are way too disorganized. Like, we like things in a place. Right. But when you've got that much square footage, it, it, for me at least, it was not worth it. It was hard. Yeah. I, have, I have a large home, and it's like just to keep everything in place, and yeah. there's always something to yeah. or take care of or organize because when you have a lot of space, you just stuff like oh, I'll oh yeah that here for now yeah exactly <laughs> and then you have a mess yeah. and then you walk out of that room and if you're not in that room for a couple of days you're like mm-hmm. oh god right. <laughs> right. Like, oh, i gotta get to that yeah, yeah. Totally relate. yeah so we did that and it was it was absolutely insane and i was ha- happy to sell it but it was definitely one of those things where it was like okay we're past that milestone and then we moved out to south lee somewhere i actually live about 10 minutes from here and it's close to my parents we're a little bit further from her family but we were so like we were so close to them for so long it was like they live in independence my family's in raymore right so even in the middle you're you got to be close to one of them yes but my parents are right next door to me oh seriously yeah for that's 20 fantastic. years fantastic we're on the same we have 15 acres at the end of a sub nice right where summit blue together uh-huh. it's like this trifecta area close to costco oh yeah stuff, yep right? So we're up on a hill, and we have the acres that most of us did, but our houses are right next to each other. So oh, nice. as my kids were growing up, that hey, go to Grandma and Grandpa's. Uh-huh. Right? Yeah, they're instant, right there. <laughs> walk through that arbor right there. That's fantastic. <laughs> yeah, it's awesome. Yeah. Well, and it makes it so nice when you have – I mean, our family is really close. I'm, We're very close to my wife's family, but my parents just are kind of around a lot. They're around mm-hmm. almost all the time. So it's been really good, like, for – especially since we've had – our kids to have that like they yes. go to grandpa and nana's or they go to grandma's or they go to you know their cousin's house and it's like they walk in the door and it's like their home anyway that's and that's awesome. what you always want yeah yeah I so you are Lori worth i am and you do a lot of things i, I do and your name <laughs> is probably pretty well known to the people in kansas city yeah, <laughs> <maybe>. <laughs> so tell tell me what you do tell us what you do okay like i yeah you know, like you said i do a lot i have a lot of interests so um my life has been i've done a lot of different things i've never been afraid to try something new so i started out um so what should i do? i'll just do the overview yeah, right definitely the, the, the large overview high high overview i i own a um, marketing and branding company um that's changed a lot to you know 18 I've had it, and I'm largely a brand consultant mm-hmm. right now. And I also um, I have a real estate business as well mm-hmm. that I've just dove into and recently, and I'm super excited about that and where awesome. that's just going to take me. And I'm a mom of two amazing kids that are grown. I have a boy and a girl. Um, my son just turned 24. My daughter's about to turn one. And <laughs> I am a grandma. That's awesome. <laughs> 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 It's kind of weird, you know, I yeah. don't feel like I am, but um, they call me Yaya, actually. Nice. So <laughs> I have a four-year-old little granddaughter and mm-hmm. a three-year-old, almost three-year-old grandson, and then mm-hmm. one on the way. Oh, man. So, yes. Woo. Yeah. And that's w- through my son. Yep. And my daughter is um, at, at UNO. Oh, nice. So, yeah, they're both doing great. They're thriving, mm-hmm. and life is good on that, you know, yeah. family and all of that. So, so I'm just... I try to spend as much time with my kids and my grandkids as I can and um, love to work. And, yeah. you know, I, I'll ever retire that enter <laughs> my mind. <laughs> yeah, so. Yeah. Well, very cool. So what what made you decide, because the c- company is called Vibe Communications, right? Yes, yeah. So what made you decide to start that? Because uh, everything I read on there, it's all, like, one of the things that's nice about when your, uh, like, your story pops mm-hmm. up on Facebook is all of mine is limited to, and I fall into the trap a lot, but all of mine is limited to people yelling at each other about who's right and who's wrong. And the right. normally they're both wrong in some way. Right. And then we get to yours and it's like, I'm with my kids on vacation. Oh. I'm doing this. I'm working with my company. I just started a new company. It's like, oh, at least somebody's positive in this world. Thank you. <laughs> well, I, ha- I feel like I have a good outlook on life. Um, life is good, generally, yeah. you know. 
um, even the bad stuff, mm -hmm. you grow through it. So it's kind of been my life philosophy. I think it's kind of innate in me. Mm -hmm. I don't know how. Maybe my mom and dad put it in there, you know, somehow. But um, I I think life's an incredible journey. Um, just to, like, to always be curious about new things. So that's kind of just, like, the philosophy I have. And even, the, you, like, you know, dance in the rain, right? Yeah, exactly. Because you dance in the rain, you're growing. Yeah. You're growing, right? Mm -hmm. So anyway, um, Vibe came. I was work. I went to school at several colleges. <laughs> um, <laughs> I had a lot of fun. There you go. So um, met a lot of great people and yeah. and kind of learned what I liked and what I didn't like. I, I went into college thinking I was going to be a coach. I, went, mm -hmm. I, was, going to, I was in physical education and I uh, was minoring in psychology. And uh, I started out at Mizzou and then went to Longview and UMKC. <laughs> <laughs> I have a right. lot of people that I know that have done that exact same track. Yeah, and, you know, it was all good. <laughs> and um, then I was work start working for my parents because they have Harley Davidson dealers. Yeah. And so I was working at one of their dealerships. Um, I worked at a couple of different. I sold motorcycles for, and I enjoyed that. Um, and then I went to the motor clothes department at our Belton store. I was in charge of. Carol, the purchasing and all of that, and that was fun. And then I is that started the one off North Scott? There used to be right. It was the one on North. Yeah, it's no, a church good. now. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. Which is weird. So it's yeah. <laughs> I'm probably going to drive by there. Actually oh yeah. When we I leave here because I want to go. I'm out here. Oh, absolutely. Well yeah. Well, my uh, my friend. And I'm sorry to interrupt no, the story. My uh, my best friend growing up and his family, like our families, were always together. Um, but they own carpet for less. Okay, uh, it, was it was just down the road from the dealership. Oh, right, right, right. And, okay. uh, th and then that area turned. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and uh, yes. so they actually, he ended up buying before any of it was developed. But when you head that way and you hit 58, I don't know how often you're out here, but like Not that whole often. Home Depot, Target, that whole area, he bought one of those uh, 58 highway facing lots before any of it was developed. Wow. And so he's he did well. He did well. That's yeah. And nice. it was one of those things like he put up just a normal building, but it was like he, I cannot imagine how little he paid for that lot compared to what it no would kidding. take now. Right, yeah. That's the way to do it. That's that's what I want to do when I grow up. Yeah. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Heck yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I want to do that one day. Yeah. I always yeah. make fun of him. It's like you're a realist. Like, it's like I can't understand how you do real estate investing. It's like that's exactly what you did. What are you talking yes. about? You just did it in a different way. Yeah. <laughs> Without planning yeah. it, right? You don't that's deal with renters, but perfect. that's okay. Yeah, but yeah, I always remember driving by there, so I had to, because Gail's place, I was mm -hmm. like, is that Cram or is that Fred? I couldn't remember, but yeah, so cool. Yeah. So you started working there for yeah, a bit? Yeah, so I started working there, and then so I um, decided that I wanted to have kids, mm -hmm. right, be a mom and all that good stuff, and my parents um, and my sister, because she was my general manager at the time, was saw that I had a knack for the creative side of things, and they had me start doing some of the marketing for and um, I did that. They set me up at home because I was like, I want to. I don't want my kids. My son was at that point young, under one. They set me up at home, and I started doing all the marketing and advertising for the of our dealership. Amazing. And I loved it. I yeah. thought it was awesome. And so I decided, well, you know what? I want to do. M I want to start my own business. Nice. Right. So yeah. it kind of just grew off of that. And I started in web development, mm -hmm. and um, I bought this little franchise called Jedi. Oh, I don't remember that one. <laughs> and uh, you know, I spent a lot of money on something I didn't need to, basically, right? right? Mm -hmm. Like, why did I buy the franchise? Yeah, but right. I did, and it I guess it got me into it, right? Mm -hmm. And it grew from there, and, you know, marketing is kind of fascinating. It doesn't stay the same very long. No. Right. No. So I was constantly, and I eventually I, I dropped the dealership because I felt like I couldn't really grow my own business mm -hmm. while that consumed so much of my life. Right. Right, because yeah. that was a big load. Like we mm -hmm. marketed a lot. Yeah. And that was, that was a huge job. So um, I thought, well, you know, I'm going to take a risk and drop the dealerships and see if I can grow on my own. Yeah. So I did, and it went really well. <laughs> That's awesome. I, fi I ventu eventually had, we had eight at um, a location on 40 Highway and uh, Little Blue Parkway. We moved up the road a little bit, mm -hmm. and we just had a great ride. Yeah. Um, and now it's just me. 
It's so just you now? <laughs> <laughs> so from here to there, right, from like 2001 to now, and um, I had some amazing people work for me. It just kind of was the, the evolution of the business. Yeah. Um, I absolutely love where I'm at with it right now because I'm a brand consultant. I have primarily one client that's working for national paper. It's not Scranton, Pennsylvania, like the office, is it? Hanover, <laughs> Pennsylvania. <laughs> and um, they have, they're amazing, and they gave me, I just, they brought me on board to rebrand, mm -hmm. to bring alignment with, because alignment, they come but yeah. they're this pretty large yeah. company, mm -hmm. right? They have 10 across the United States, and um, they do a great business, so yeah. they wanted to be so they brought me on to do that, and they're they're fantastic. They give me all this autonomy and they go and make it happen, mm -hmm. and um, it's a great team. Thing. So that that's been amazing, and I love being a brand consultant. I don't have any. Yeah. I loved my all of my right amazing intelligence all in the business. They're awesome, but uh, I do enjoy that, having overhead of a. Office yeah. building, an office space, and not having any kind of, you know, at this yeah. stage of my kind of nine. And it happened because my kids were, I went and kind of went virtual first and then mm -hmm. I got it down because my kids, I was probably came from age, mm -hmm. but you know, you start to hear that. Yeah. And, and I was just like, I'm missing out. Right? Yeah. They were in, my son was in high school, my daughter's getting ready for high school. I thought I want to be at home. I can't do that. Right. right. Yeah. Well, so that's I a transition. That's one heck of a pivotal time too, because you know when you're you have kids that are in elementary or middle, it's like okay, it's still you know we're still making the way up the ladder right. to high school, and then once they're in high school, it's the like those four years become so important in so many different ways. They're the yes. ones you remember the most. Ugh. They're the ones where you need the most help because you're going mm -hmm. through puberty. Yeah. You're you know, going class to class to class. I mean, everything kind of hits, and all of a sudden, it means something, too. It does. And that's what I – I have a niece who, luckily, we're very close. And uh, I told her constantly, like, as soon as she entered high school, she was always an A student. I know you worked really hard mm -hmm. before. You've always studied. But now's the time you get into programs. You – every class is an A, and there's no question about it. And luckily, like, she was – she would have done it on her own. But it was just one of those things it's like, it's nice that you were great. Right. Now you have to be better. Right. And in college, it's the same way. I mean, it it's is. just another step, another step, another step. But, boy, I mean, she want, I mean, she's wanted to be a vet. I've known her since she was, like, nine. She's wanted to be a vet since she was nine. And now she's doing what she needs to. And she's in college is now. Is she going in that direction? Oh, yeah. Wow. Yeah, she just nailed high school. She's kicking butt in college. I think she, she's in her senior year this year, I think. And just, I mean – she got a B plus on a course that I don't think I can pronounce. You're right. <laughs> and, and she was so mad about it. I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. Right. I am not going to tell you what some of my grades were in classes that you can. Right. Still passed them. Still got the degree. You're doing great. Good Lord. Stop. Yeah. Don't be, don't be so hard on yourself. Yeah. My daughter's a little bit. Oh, yeah? And yeah. She's perfectionist. High expectations. Perfectionist. Yeah. She was emailing me or, or texting me last night. I had to be mid. She got 200 out of 200 on paper. Oh, she nice. Stressed. Right. Completely <laughs> on, right? She goes, I don't know how I pulled that off. I was like, off because yeah. you, you worked hard on it and exactly. you were determined. Right? Yeah. Because that's. <laughs> and if she would have had a B, she would have freaked out. Oh, right? yeah. yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Especially something like there was that many points. I can't yeah. say that I'm a. Yeah. Maybe. Not <laughs> maybe. Different way. Ways, in a different way. Yeah. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah. Well, I mean, you're. It's interesting to me when, you know, you're talking about being, um, what was the term you used, brand consultant. consultant. Yep. The landscape has changed so much in everything that you can do. And, I mean, this is obviously, like, that, that sounds like a dumb statement because somebody's probably listening going, like, yeah, every, things change. Alex, what are you talking about? But it, as far as brand consulting goes, I mean, you can work with somebody in Pennsylvania and not have to fly back and forth every day. Right. You can, you know, you don't have to have eight people because you find the right, you know, companies or you find the right individuals that you work mm -hmm. with online, it makes it so much better. It makes yeah. it so much easier. And a lot of times it's a bit better. And that's been something that's been strange for me because a lot of what I do, I'm trying to do it all on my own. And for a while I was like, I don't know how to design that. 
right. what I'm doing. And then somebody told me about a website called Fiverr. Fiverr, yeah. <laughs> like, that's great. So now I have certain individuals that if I need something, like I've worked with them in the past, like, hey, love what you did here. I need another one. Right. I need this. I need that. I need this. Yeah. And it's worked out. I'm yeah, lady. a lot of Fiverr. Yeah. yeah. And sometimes you run into really bad Fiverr people. Like, yeah. they're just they're, horrible. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> yeah. But then you're kind of looking at it and you're like, well, if I can get this product for this, and I know that somebody that's an expert at it can make it happen, if I'm the person that's the point man on it or point woman on mm -hmm. it, I, I can create a great team online. Yeah, that's the key. I mean, I think that you um, – because some people might go to Fiverr and they think that they can create their entire brand set and say, and I would say, okay, yeah, you can, as long as you know where you're headed, right, right, and yeah. that you that you're consistent, yeah, right, because it could a brand can fall apart so quickly. Oh yeah, right, and so um, that's what I think. That's what I do is I hold, yeah, right. I use my research, my mm -hmm. creative direction. I don't do everything do a lot of it but i don't do everything i reach out to the yeah. areas right and then I make sure everything i've seen all apart so mm -hmm. and like my website for example right now that's the an example of the cobbler has no <laughs> that our website is so right? yep. and i just haven't had time to yeah address it because yeah, like you get so busy no i'm working on my clients why would i need to worry about mine right. yeah exactly and i have really have gotten Majority of my business um, through. Yeah. Right. I, I get people like me through media, mm -hmm. positivity. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. The happiness. And um, that's where my business is. I'm such a huge platform yeah. for your business. There's a right way and a wrong way to do it. Mm -hmm. Right. And not be salesy, of course. Grow your social your social network. Yeah. Right. As well as your mm -hmm. everything. Yeah, I think it's so. I mean, we had a there was a an agent. I won't. But there was an agent that worked on uh, my brother's team, and I went out to lunch with my brother. We had a couple of things to discuss, and we were talking, and he just got a text, and he shook his head and put his phone down. That's not normal. We need what's going on, and this particular agent was. Like basically refusing to have a social presence, like a social network presence, because he didn't like Mark Zuckerberg. Oh my gosh! Over like, it. <laughs> you cannot like him all you want. Do you know right. that that makes you money? Like, come on, dude. That's I, crazy. I, I never understood it. It's like you and I listened to. Uh, do you know who Gary Vaynerchuk is by yeah, chance? I've okay. heard the name. Gary B. Yeah, he is blunt. Like, okay. I mean. Mm -hmm. I think he's from Jersey, like, and, or he's actually an immigrant. I can't remember. I think it was Belarus is where he's from. So kind of immigrant mentality, came here, didn't speak English, you know, went to school with English-speaking kids, but worked his butt off, as did his parents. And But he always talks about just absolutely blunt things. And it was one of those times where I wanted to call this guy, listen, every word in the book. <laughs> that's where your people are. Right. And that's what Gary Vee always talks about. He's like, that's – if." You have to go where your clients are. Absolutely. If their eyes aren't on you, you're not in front of them. And that's not the yellow pages anymore. Right. That's not a, even a billboard anymore. And the amount of population. Everyone's. Yeah. I've had people say, well, my, our clients on our. Get it. Your clients are on Facebook. Oh, I yeah. promise. Mm -hmm. Right. I promise. Oh, yeah. Yeah. 90% of our population. I forgot the, what the numbers are. I mean, that. It's really yeah. the world population. Yeah, it's like 7 billion people on the planet and 3 billion are on Facebook. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and and the other house. four might not have the best internet, right? Right, because they <laughs> can't <laughs> access. Yeah. <laughs> right. So exactly. it's like you're kind of dealing with a, a little bit of a hindrance there. Yeah. But yeah, I, I gotta do. Use it. Yeah, I don't understand it. I actually deleted the Facebook app because I was watching, like I was telling you, I was watching all those things, and I, I will mm -hmm. sink down to people's level. And I just realized, like, I can't do that right now. And I just saw the election coming up. I'm like, delete. Mm -hmm. And it was the easiest decision ever. Right. I, I still have my pages thing. Right. I still Absolutely. will get the notifications right. when I log on just mm -hmm. to make sure nothing crazy is going on. I can't. Like, I've got Twitter. I have Instagram. I have everything else. And I have my pages app so I can be active there. Yeah. I can't. I can't listen to people it's yell at each bad. other anymore. It's, it's got, bad. You know, I just feel like I won't, I won't get political. Um, but... 
Ev- everyone has a right to an opinion. Yeah. Right? So if we other and then try to find common ground on but yeah. I just feel like we so much more done as yeah. a society instead of I don't believe I don't believe in that. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So for as positive an impact as it has, it also has this strange negative impact because I don't think and I I've got great friends that will say stuff, and again, most of the time I can ignore it, and sometimes I will not ignore it, especially when it comes to, like, finance stuff, Mm because it's like, now you're lying to people. Right. That's my biggest issue. It's like, if you're lying to somebody about something. Yes. Yeah. So that's where I draw the line. What's that? and that happens. I mean, that's happening. And it's just one of those things. You can't do that. But again, that's why I deleted it until after the election because it's like I don't right. I don't care who wins honestly at this point. I just want everybody to stop yelling at each other. <laughs> I'm right there with. You. Yeah, it's weird. It's a strange time. Yeah, because you know but one of my then my one of my. Uh, yeah. Did, did you yep, know that? I did. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I went there. I worked. I uh, oh, that yeah, because I, I contacted you. That. Yep, I contacted you and asked, and I think you connected me. What's her name? Trisha. Is Trisha that Tarion? Yep. Yes. And I, I went with her. Now. Yep. Did, okay. <laughs> Four or five I was times. Trying to figure out <laughs> it just came together. Yeah. Well, I, I just happened to do it. I told everybody, I was like, don't let me go like to do yoga with you because I'll shut down your studio because I think I got in like the last month or something. Mm-hmm. And it was like, hey, love you, but we're shutting down. It's like, right. oh, man. <laughs> but no, I really like I, I've never been a stretchy person at all. Mm-hmm. Like e- even when I was younger, I was just not that. So I was like, I probably need to do something like this. And it was great. I loved it. But then it shut down. I was like, I'm not going to go to anywhere else for a while because I'm going to shut them down. Yeah. <laughs> and you know what? This sh- oh, a place had a really vibrant energy. Mm-hmm. Loved it. But for me, the timing of everything that happened mm-hmm. was really good. You know, it's yeah. just like everything fell into place. So my whole thought on vibe was, had its place in time, yeah, and did amazing. Mm-hmm. And I think what happened there still guide people. Yeah, absolutely. There was growth. Something about this. I don't, and it wasn't just me. There's just something about that. Yeah, you know, that had um, such great. I always felt like doors are really super. Have this thing. Oh you know, yeah. From walk barefoot in the grass, right? If you're mm-hmm. having a really bad day, yeah. go outside and walk. Yeah, barefoot just go to in a park. Grass. Yeah. And there's that floor mm. and just all of them is feet that walked across <laughs> it, right? And um, yeah, it had, a, it had a great vibe and a great. The short space. Um, Still what? A little over two years. Yeah, a little yep. over two years. Yeah. Yep. I mean, I I know that sh- place really well. The reason that I went there was because at the time I lived like, you know, less than a mile away from it. I lived in Timber Hills right across from Lakewood. And uh, so when I saw that you had started it, I kept following it. And then eventually I was like, your fat butt just needs to go do it. <laughs> <laughs> like, so I went in. Your butt's not fat. <laughs> <come on. laughs> I try. But no, I, I went in and was like, you know, this is obviously something that I, I really enjoy. And I've tried to do it, you know, every once in a while. It's just one of those things like. When you find a place that's like, I'm such a lazy person when it comes to stuff like that. Like, I'm, I worked out with my brother because my brother basically drugged me to it. He'd always pick me up. So if I didn't, if I wasn't going to be picked up, he'd yell at me. Uh, my brother's 11 years older than me, so it's okay. not like he really did. Right, right. But, uh, <laughs> like, he didn't, like, come grab me out of my room or anything. But, like, that's why I worked out in high school. The only time that I did something myself when it came to, like, physical fitness was when I was in college. I lived in a house off campus by myself. And I got so bored that I would go work out four days a week and I'd come home and like box, he like hit the out, bag. Had a boredom. Oh, yeah. And I got in <laughs> great shape, bad. but it was just like, I probably need friends. <laughs> but that was hilarious. it. I've never yeah. heard that somebody's work worked out because. Bored. So bored. That had to be. Yeah. Had to be oh, yeah. Weird. I, it was so, it got to the point where I never was a person who like, even cared like I didn't mow a lawn until I got this house and my dad like as much as he kind of said like I hate the lawn he was he loves his lawn now as he's gotten older but he hated it back in the day and he just constantly complained about it, like I wish we'd just get no rain so that it grows brown whatever I don't care right. 
Um, so I never did anything, but he would secretly kind of enjoy it. Like it was still his yard and it was his place. So he wanted to make sure it was taken care of. And so when I went to Columbia, it was like, you know, you have to mow. And I was like, ah, I don't even know how to. Do that. <laughs> I was That's 20 years funny. old, had no idea. Yeah. So I learned quick, but it was a pretty decent sized city lot. Mm -hmm. Did it. It was fine. And I still didn't like it. And then I got so bored by like halfway through my junior year, not knowing anyone really. It was like, I we did all the landscaping, like took care of it, fertilized it, made sure it was nice. When I got moles, I killed every single one of them um, because they would just tear up. I know, I've had moles before. Oh, yeah, they're yeah. fun. But yeah, so I, I just, it got to the point where it was like, okay, so what else can I do? I was like, you can go work out. And I was 20, so like I could eat a cheeseburger, go work out, and I had like a six pack. That doesn't happen anymore, but it was nice then. It was yeah. funny because you don't seem like you're on social kind of guy. No, you I'm very, very social. social. Yeah, I just didn't know anybody. I okay. knew like three people there. And again, I didn't have the – when I went to Mizzou, I went to uh, community college first, mm -hmm. and I majored in speech and theater because they had a great theater at State Fair Community College. So I was in all the plays. Uh, the only play that I wasn't in, I was the assistant director for. Like, I did two years there and was just around people, just right. always around people. I had an apartment off campus so when the party was going on that was at my place. And so, yeah, I had two years of being around people. I went to Columbia. I knew zero people. And as social as I can be, I'm also not the kind of person that's going to, like, walk up to somebody. Sure. Mm -hmm. So it, it was – I eventually, like, got to know a few people here and there. But, yeah, literally worked out because of boredom because I knew no. But through it all, you learned how to take care of your fawn. Oh, yeah. Grow, grow, grow yeah, I'm still alive. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you got in good shape. I, I, I fed myself. <laughs> yeah, it was always so embarrassing. When I met my uh, uh, the woman who is now my wife, um, she came into Columbia, and I had, I had, like, ketchup, mustard, Worcestershire sauce, A1, um, and I think maybe, like, a gallon of milk. And then that was my refrigerator, except for the bottom level was all Bud Light. Oh my. I just had the ultimate, you know, guy in college fridge. I had like right. frozen right. chicken in the freezer, frozen burgers, like not living well. Got your sauces. Oh, got the right. sauce. Oh, yeah. Got the oh, yeah. I had pasta. Mm -hmm. I had everything on. The, like I had a shelf that had like pasta sauce because here's how fat I was. Like I was working out all the time, so I was always hungry. And if I didn't go out for like fast food or something, if I made food, I would go to Walmart and I'd pick up like four, <laughs> four one pound things of beef and I'd come home and I would make that into spaghetti or I'd make it into tacos. Yeah. I would eat the whole thing. Oh. Yeah. That was nightly. Like, I don't know That's how. That's a lot of food. Yeah. I don't know how my heart's not like, hey, no jerk. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that was, wow. I mean, again, in college, like yeah. everywhere. So yeah, that's 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 how I uh, that's how I rolled in college. I went to work, I went to school, and I worked out and ate, and that was pretty much my life. And that's when you met your wife. Yeah, yeah we here. met. <laughs> yeah, like I went, I met my wife. She um, really loved you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I I I could talk. I was apparently good at talking. Yeah, I met her. I was taking my buddy out for his twenty first birthday, and thank God I was the sober driver, because nobody else was going to be able to talk to anybody that night. And that's probably my fault. But we went out for his 21st, and uh, she was taking a coworker of hers out. She was already working. She was an attorney in town. She's mm -hmm. a little bit older than me. And uh, she was already having success, and she met this 21-year-old college kid in a bar. And somehow that has worked itself into, you know, a 12-year relationship. That's awesome. It was that's insane. Good. I don't know how much I got made fun of, but it was quite a bit. Right. Yeah. All of her friends gave her a lot of a lot of a lot of crap. <laughs> it's meant to be, right? Exactly. Yeah. Stars align. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> I'm showing that it's showing up. But can you talk for just a second. Sure. What do you want me to say? That's it. Testing? You're good. Okay. Cool. Yeah. It, so, for whatever reason, there's some people's voices. I just have a little blip where it shows that you're oh. recording, and even like my voice because it comes off mm -hmm. booming pretty much. My voice barely shows up. Oh so my! When so, yeah, so right. when somebody else does, it's and like I have a, I don't have a large. Yeah. Yeah. So I just had to make sure that it was recording because, like, there it showed up, and I just want. It's like it's not showing up. I better. But that's why I have two. 
do okay. different systems of recording. Right. So back up. <laughs> yeah, get freaked me out for a second. <laughs> like, yeah, we've talked all this. I time know it would be terrifying. Yeah, we've talked. We just went <laughs> over thirty minutes. Yeah, exactly. regardless, right? <laughs> yeah, let's start over. That'd be great. <laughs> yeah. What do, what do we talk about? Yeah, no, Funny. it's. I I got so used to working with this one software, and then I was like, well, I want now that I've got a better computer, I want mm -hmm. some redundancy, and I want to set up video. And because YouTube, it's like all it is, if you look up the episodes on YouTube, it's just like a picture of that and then the recording. Oh, it's right. just the audio. Mm -hmm. Well, that's dumb. If I'm right. having the conversation anyway, I might as well put it. Yeah, video. you can put so it on Facebook, too, yeah, at the exactly. same time. Like, I have a ton of deals. That'd be awesome. Yeah, eventually yeah. I want to get streaming. I really do want to do that. But right. That, that's a whole other whole well, strategy. Can't you just do it through Facebook Live? Mm -hmm. You can. Right, okay. Yeah. yeah. I, it's just the learning curve on it. Sure. Because mm -hmm. everything feeds through here, and there's so many different buttons. Right. It's been it's been an adventure. Like when I first started, I was working on a laptop that was tinier than that. Right. And I was just like, I hope this works. I had two microphones and that. So well, this <laughs> setup is really cool. Thank I you. Like it. I appreciate it. Yeah, it's it's taken a year to kind of get to this point. Yeah. But and again, it's you can tell what how much I concentrate on the rest of the office. You know, it's all <laughs> yeah. Looks good. Thank you. Yeah, those <laughs> are I, I'm uh without question obsessed with Game of Thrones. Like I like Zelda. I play right. with that. Mm -hmm. I play it. Um but yeah, when the show came out, I started right. reading the books, and then I started going into fan theories, and literally was like, "I need to control this. Exactly. This is this is like an addiction." I know nothing about it. Oh yeah, mm -mm. yeah. except the name. Yep, fair yeah. enough. Game of Thrones. Yep, yep. Yeah, you know, <laughs> if you ever decide to watch it, you need a uh, uh, you have a question, call me up. Okay. Yeah, because everybody does that. Oh, I bet. Yeah. Right. I was telling you I was lazy about working out. Mm -hmm. I finally, about five and a half years ago, like just said, screw it, and I hired a personal trainer that w I knew through a family member, and I've been there ever since, but I know it's Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and I have to show up. That's how I make the commitment. Be true of habit. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah. I had to do that, but during the show, he would ask me questions, and then people would hear us talking about it, and they would start watching it, so they'd ask me questions. How do you know all of this? It's like, I don't want to tell you how much time wow. I've devoted to this, right. to this fictional reality. Well, I've heard <laughs> it's really good. Yeah, it's just it's violent. Kinda. I mean, oh, I see. I couldn't watch it then. Yeah, my kids tease me because I like can't just I can't handle violence. Yeah, stuff, right. So no, uh -uh. it's uh, bloody. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's pretty. It's pretty intense. I mean, that was kind of the that was the reason the books became so popular, was because like he basically creates this story where nobody's safe it's not like mm -hmm. king arthur is gonna save the world it's not like that at all right. it's just like you know that's my favorite and now he's dead okay yeah. that's the whole show i did watch ozark <laughs> that's you great know, and yeah it has some violence in it. Mm -hmm. but that i really enjoyed that did you watch it yeah yeah we uh i thought i went all the way through it's like the first that i've actually oh yeah 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 i love jason bateman yeah yeah and uh, we we started watching it. So we have a lake house. Um, Is it at the Lake of the Ozarks? Yep, it's at the at Lake of the Ozarks. Do? Okay, oh, okay cool. nice. So yeah. then you're relating. But even though it's not filmed. Oh. Yeah, it's filmed in Atlanta. Uh, right. But they just have shots every once in a while from there. I thought so, too. Okay, yep. so yep. that's legit. Mm -hmm. so I'm like, well, yeah, like the that's really the lake. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's in a lake in Atlanta. And I know this because, um, one, I mean, they said it, but – some friends of ours live in Atlanta, mm -hmm. and they were driving on their boat, and they were like, that's – and they took a picture of it, and they were like, that's the house that they filmed from right up wow. there. Wow. Yeah, so they drove right by it on this lake okay. by them. Funny. But we thought – my wife and I watched that the first time, and we're watching it. I think they had a hidden camera at our house. <laughs> like, it really freaked us out because the guys in finance, it was like, well, my degree's in finance. Like, okay, that's, that's not much of a correlation. When we bought our lake house – there was an old man living in it that was perfectly content to just stay there. Like Buddy. Oh yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. So I was like, so there's an old man. Okay, how? Let's keep Did this he going. Did he stay there? Yeah, he stayed there for the first like month no. or two. No, isn't yeah. that weird? It was. It, it like to everybody else, it was. To me, it was like this place is right by a community that we actually owned a lake house, mm -hmm. and my parents were right next door, basically right next door. They were a couple houses down. Um, and then this place is a 28 acre, um, piece of land that's bordering that community. So it worked out perfectly for us. Big house, huge garage, nice, you know, probably three acres that's kind of like a park in front of it, and then the rest of it's all woods. And uh, so for us, we, you know, we had a flood in it, and then we're able to renovate it, went way over the top in renovating it. That all happened after this. So initially, this place had been abandoned. 
And so this guy, the bank basically paid him to move in, and we knew him from the community. Okay. And so he's in there, and we're basically like, what if we just stayed there and made sure nobody broke into the place? Right, because we've okay, had a couple right. of incidents. And so we were going to do it, and then I uh, brought down a security system I was going to install, and that was the moment he was like, no, I, I can't live here if you're going to be watching me. It's like, dude, but we don't have good enough satellite internet down here for me to ever watch. And why right. would I want to? Right. <laughs> really, no. Be a little creepy. Yeah. So we, uh, so he ended up moving out, but like that was our initial circumstance. And That's then they had the funny. crazy birds in the one episode, and we have the crazy um, buzzards that mm -hmm. fly around the place. They drive a Sea Ray. We drove a Sea Ray. Like, we just kept, like, marking stuff down. We're like, this is about us. <laughs> what cartel is coming after us? <laughs> that would make life exciting. Oh, yeah. Yeah, no thanks, though. <laughs> yeah, when you find out that, spoiler alert, when you find out that she knew about it, I was like, well, come on. Right. Like, you can't be mad. What are you right. talking about? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 This last season was crazy. So Only one more. I... There's only going to be one only more. Only one more. Yep. Only one more have season. Have they been? I don't know. Okay. I don't know. I know so many of those studios have shut down. It's crazy. So sad. This is the. I mean, it, it, it initially this was going to be weird no matter what, mm -hmm. but this is the weirdest thing I think I've ever seen in my life. Oh like, yeah. I, I think it's definitely it's like crazy. Yeah. I mean, outside of like September 11th, which was tragic. Right. But this is the most sustained craziness. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I'll never forget what, you know the moment. Oh yeah. Was, right. I saw the second plane go into the tower. I was in uh, I was in school, and I was researching a paper, mm -hmm. and I saw the Empire State Building run been uh, hit by a plane, or not the Empire State, State Building, the Twin Towers. Right. The first one was right. there, and I sat right there watching it because I remember was it the 1920s when a biplane crashed into the Empire mm -hmm. State Building? Came on here, and I was looking down. I look up, and that famous scene that they show where on it's live awesome. TV, it mm -hmm. hits, and then they go back to the panel, and then they go right back to mm -hmm. the – that's what I saw. And I'm just sti like sitting there, and every single person just kind of starts looking up, and no work got done at all. There was nothing that was like going to be done. what's going on in our world. Yeah. Right. When immediately when that happens, you're like, this is planned. Like when right. the first one happened, it's like, okay, foggy mornings, yes. you know, things went down, yes. whatever. But kind of like the whole Sully thing where he had to land in the Hudson. It's like right. weird circumstances mm -hmm. breed weird endings. But when that happened, it was like, oh. I thought we were at bad. war. Yeah. Yeah. You know? And my son, we were, I was a children. And I was a mess because I was from the first plane at the hospital, getting prepped for the second plane. And – what ha what if yeah. we go into a full back there? Yeah. Right. Oh my gosh. Oh yeah. <laughs> I went to my knees. I'm Garrett, sure. I was never gonna see my child again because we're gonna be just oh, yeah. all of the uncertainty happening at that moment. My daughter was not even with me because she was with a friend because crazy crazy yep. time. Yeah. Crazy moment, right. And mm -hmm. so yeah, agree. Yeah, that, that will be forever burnt in. Oh, absolutely. People's memories, you know, had tragic, tragic time, and mm -hmm. now COVID. Yeah, it's just COVID's just sustained craziness. It's not the I peak know, of I that. Get ready to say yeah. right, this ongoing. Yeah, yeah. This time, which is tragic. It's driving people well. nuts. Like it's literally driving people crazy. It has. I've yeah. seen it. You yeah. Know, isolation mm -hmm. at first was so horrible. All of the opinions, because everyone feels strongly about different ways about what's mm -hmm. happening. Yeah. You know, driving people. Yeah. Right? Businesses suffering breaks my heart. Yeah. Coming from an entrepreneur, hardly stand to watch that happen. No. You know? Like, crazy. Well, and you can't bring – that's the strangest thing to me about this is – when it initially started, which I'll, I'll tell you the story about how it initially started in a second for our family because it was real weird. But when it initially started, it seemed like everybody was kind of like, okay, this is going to be rough, mm -hmm. but we'll, we'll get through mm -hmm. it a couple weeks, no big deal. Like everybody's just on lockdown. Right, right. Everybody kind of just, you know, yep, yep, done. Mm -hmm. And then, again, this is getting back a little bit to the social media argument. Then it's like, well, what do you do at home? You want to interact with people. You get on social media. Right. Well, 
all of my favorite people are also on social media, whether your favorite person's or an actor or right. a, you know, whoever it is, like your, your, your tribe, your team, your team is here and everybody else's team is here. And then all the opinions started to come out and all the scientific facts started to come out. And then things that should have been okay all of a sudden weren't okay. Like all of the people that were like, well, you know, hospitals are reporting that this is a COVID death and the guy got hit by a truck. Like, oh, no. And as soon as you do that, it's going to go off the rails. Mm -hmm. Because now, media, like 24-7 media has a story. Right. And they can run with it. And they've got to fill 24 right. hours a day. And all of a sudden, all the people that used to be at work during the day, mm -hmm. they're at home now. They're able to watch their craziness. And their heads are just, <sighs> it's like propaganda. Mm -hmm. We don't, and I honestly, I, I think I don't even know what's real. No. Seriously. I mean, I have my own. Yeah, I do too. What I think, but I, what I think might not even be right. Yeah. Right? Because there's so much stuff coming either direction. Thing. Yeah. Thoughts and facts. Yeah, exactly. Right? Well, it's like they're supposed to be factual, but mm -hmm. how can you back How can it? Yeah, why is the, like, I like scientists because most of the time when something is proven wrong, they just go, oh, I was wrong, right. and they move on. That's not what happens in the news, especially no. not now. Right. There's a, I, I, did you ever watch Jon Stewart when he was on The Daily Show no, at all? I don't no, I think so. Mm -mm. So he was w probably one of my favorite people because he was on a, you know, a daily news show, okay. quote, air quotes. Um, and he was trusted more than anybody at some of the major networks because he'd call them on their BS. Right. And I was always ridiculously impressed with it. But there was one time that I thought he summed it up perfectly because he always had these like beginning of the show monologues. Mm -hmm. And it was he showed something that was like, you know, how is 24-7 news going to handle it? How is cable news going to handle this? I think it was the Malaysian flight tragedy. Okay. And so Anderson Cooper, they have a clip. Yeah. And Anderson Cooper comes on and says they've lost a flight. It's, it's reasonable to assume that it went down. Now crews are going to try to find it. Cuts them off. It's like that was a 60-second, however long it took, reasonable, succinct comment by CNN. Really good. And then the executives went, oh, no, we still have 23 hours and 59 minutes of stuff that we need to fill. And so then it was just all the ridiculous actual simulators of flights. They had all of these ridiculous things right. talking about one plane that went down. Is right. it tragic? Absolutely. What are you doing? Right. This isn't the only story of the day. Right. And even if focuses. It, yeah, and yeah. If, even if it was, like, you can limit that to 60 seconds. Mm -hmm. It's terrible. If they're trying to figure it out, we'll get back to you when we have facts. So they, they all this. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, they <laughs> were asking an expert, it. asking a leading expert, if it could have been a black hole. <laughs> it's just like on, I think it was Don Lemon show. It's like you got to be kidding me, guys! Like just get on something else. Just have the you know right. have the American flag we waving, have a blank screen. In other ways. Yeah, yeah. Put on sports. Jeez, but that's wow. just what what it is right now, and it that's is. the craziness. I you had to stop watching. I I had stopped at first. I was like, mm -hmm. you know. Every day. Well, you're you trying know. to gather information, right? Right, trying yeah. to gather information. Finally, I'm like, I'm out. It's too much. Yep. Right? It's mess with the happy factor. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. If it's something starts to mess with the happy factor. Yeah, yeah you can't do it. Right. No, it's not going to work. It's so, yeah. I stopped it's watching it. And mm -hmm. it is on Facebook. It's hard to get away from it. But, you know. Oh, I have friends that go after each other. And I think that's. Yeah. Right. Yeah, two so. friends know each other. We hang out. Literally hung out with you last weekend. You're yelling at me about this stuff. And I, there are people that I don't like to defend that are in the public realm, and I f find myself defending them only in the sense of like, would would you at least like listen to the full statement as opposed to what they fed you? <laughs> listen to the full statement. I posted when the riots started, and mm -hmm. I and as you know, yeah, I don't what I, I do not even really opinionated. So. Um, I posted something about I, I was fearful of my daughter's safety. Yeah. She's in Omaha. I had to Yeah. To her. It's a very, my opinion was very dramatic. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah. Therapy. Yeah. And we expect the same, right? 
and the I had to ones. take it. I took it down because I didn't want to. I wasn't trying to create hmm? I was rub in yeah. any way. Last thing, so like, and my daughter was like, "You gotta take that down." Yeah. So talked about it. I took it. Down. Message those people. Facebook private mm-hmm. message. I respect your. Don't yell at me. <laughs> exactly. That's what I was yeah. basically. I respect this your opinion. Respect mine. This isn't going to help. No. By being like. Yeah. Right. Just it's, it's tragic. It's sad. Yeah. And there are so many things that people like initially agreed on. George Floyd thing. Everybody agreed, and then yes. somehow a week later, it, it's pol- it's political. What are we doing? It was what horrible. are we doing here? Right. Like, it was horrible. Yeah. Everyone agreed. Yeah. That, that should not. Have yeah, I. Right. I mean, one of the, my very good friends and family members is a very well-respected police officer. I went to him like two days after you know the media blitz started, and I was like, messed up, right? That was horrible. Like there was nobody. It, it wasn't like the you know the thin blue line in that sense where it was just like you know oh we have to defend him no right. matter what. It was right. like no, that guy's a jerk. He yeah. killed somebody and should go to prison. Yeah. And that was it. That was what everybody thought. And then all of a sudden, again, we start talking about it 24-7, 365, and right. everybody goes back to their team. Yep. That's happened. We were right. all together. We were united. For a few short moments. Yes, we were <laughs> united. We all agreed that yeah. it happened. And I do think part of it has to do with the fact that people are pinned out. Yeah. Like, get outside. Right. Go take a walk. I probably did that, too. Yeah. For sure. Put your cell phone down. I mean, cell phones and social media are mm-hmm. like, I bet there are going to be dissertations by soon to be doctors that are just going to be filled with what society looked like before the cell phone right. and especially like oh. the iPhone and then after it's like when you had the little True. Nokia thing like you still had to call or text people right <laughs> you couldn't just go like you know flip through Facebook or go on like you right. you had to put some effort into human communication right. now it's it's yeah. human's crime lost that i think it also takes away passion mm mm-hmm. mhm Yeah. Of what? Yeah. Right. Absolutely. Because we don't have that human. I love like. Have to have. Start to. I just. Mm-hmm. Just. Yeah. Right. And that's the world that matters. Everything's a big deal. There's nothing in the world that isn't a big deal when it's right here. I know, right, right like, in front of your face. Yeah, right? exactly. Like, I need to comment it. on that. That's yeah. why I deleted Facebook. I was like, I cannot do this anymore. Yeah. I can't. And I knew it the moment I responded to one post, and I just sunk down to the lowest level, and I immediately just, like, deleted it and unfollowed that group. And was like, I'm becoming the person I don't want to be. Right. I'm be I, I know I'm susceptible to it. I was like, I, this is the only way to do it. It's like, you know, somebody that's – smoking and they know right. like I, I i'm gonna go back if i use the gum right. if i use the gum i'm gonna go back right old turkey so yeah that's that was my yeah. thing i mean that i posted that post which is something i wouldn't have normally done yeah. right mm-hmm. i did put an opinion Fact. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah it's crazy like my my wife is probably a, of all the people i know she's probably the best at it because she never posts anything Oh, right. Yeah, she just like right. she's on there. People are dumb. People are dumb. That's really she, well, nice. That's really attorney, nice. Right? She yep. Knows oh better. yeah. She, yeah. Well, she's an she employment law attorney. Okay. So she sees like all the cases where somebody yeah. gets on social media and says some things that they shouldn't make mm-hmm. public. Then they go into the office the next day. It's like you know this is kind of a problem. When you talked about you know the ethnicity of your boss at work on a mm-hmm. social media platform, like that yeah. probably you're, you're like you're, you're fired. Like you know sense, that right? Right. <laughs> Oh, it's insane. Yeah. You know, and this has been weird because that was my my biggest issue with the with the pandemic was if if we're going to social distance and we're going to get shut down, mm-hmm. we have to understand the economy is going to go down. It's mm-hmm. going to like whether we see it, whether it's on the stock market, the real estate market for whatever reason has not gone down at all. Yay. It's yeah, I know. <laughs> it's insane. Awesome. I have I have people that are buyers that not mine. I apparently have had really good luck, but I've got people that have talked to me and they're like, I can't get a house. Right. I'm in this price range. They go so fast. They go so fast and they go so far. And every single time they do that, I'm like, I'm going to appraise. 
Are they going to appraise for that? I know, right. <laughs> like, no, it's probably a not. Scary. My yeah. son's getting ready to sell, so he's sit on the sell side, but he's also got to buy something. Yeah. So it's like, house. Mm-hmm. Can be buying at max price. <laughs> yep, exactly. Even if you get a house that like needs renovation, right? Yes. Like it's still gonna go. Crazy. That's Numbers. probably the best thing to do. Oh yeah, hundred okay. percent. Right. Yeah, I. I mean, I think anything because it, it's two things. One, you know, if you have the money to fix it up, that's a huge thing because mm -hmm. that's gonna be out of pocket. Right. Unless you do like a four or three k or, I think that's right. Uh, two or three k. Um, but if you have the money out of pocket, it's fantastic. Especially if it's livable, mm -hmm. it's just kind of old. Right. Right. But it's also beneficial because people coming on the market, if it's priced correctly, if it's w priced high, who cares? But if it's priced correctly, even people that see that it's priced correctly, they're not going to want to get into some of those because they do have to do work. Right. There's right. so many people that are like, nope. I mean, I did this with this last one. I've you know flipped houses. I've renovated mm -hmm. houses. I've renovated rentals. I did two houses in a row where we did a ton of projects, too. We bought a new construction house because I was like, F this. I'm out. I don't right. want to do anything. Right. <laughs> you already done all that. Exactly. Right, yeah. yeah, we put in a pool, but somebody else did it. I don't have to do any of yeah. it. But, yeah, I mean, I think those are those are probably the only ones right now that you're going to find a deal. Right. And the positive, I was thinking. Yeah, and the mm -hmm. positive would be if you can find it in, like, a popular area, then you're going to be even better. Right. Because eventually it's just going to be. I mean, I say that. Be in, like, Grand Oh, okay. Kind of area. Yeah, so he'll be fine. Better out there anyway. I mean, mm -hmm. pricing and everything. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, Grain Valley yeah. would be great. I think so, too. Yeah. Right. Where we were in Blue Springs, we were so far to the west that, like, if we would have gone a street over, it would have been Grand Valley. Or oh, okay. east, sorry, east. Right. Yep. Yeah, and I like that area. Mm -hmm. So There's a subdivision up there called uh, Adams Point Village that was the mm -hmm. one that was five mm -hmm. minutes away from that house. Mm -hmm. And that was where I worked. And it was all, you know, they said, like, 350-plus. It was, like, 400-plus houses that were going in by the end. But, you know, we were going to develop the other side of it, and it was just like – People kind of looked at it and they're like, we could just sell this land and make a ton of money off right. of it. We've owned it for years. So much easier. Oh, and land is so, like, it's so expensive right now. Right. Anything that's subdivision size, it's like, how are you going to build a $250,000 house on that mm -hmm. lot? Like, you're not. Or the lot's going to be that big. Right. <laughs> right, 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 right. <laughs> but yeah, that's, I never thought I'd go new construction because you can do so well if you buy something mm -hmm. that's just a tad out of date. Right. Honey oak cabinets, floors need to be refinished. Yeah. Um, carpet in the wrong places, but I uh, we were so done. And when that thing came on, it was like sweet one year right. warranty. Got to put a pool in. I'm done. Just yeah. Relax and enjoy. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. My biggest projects have been like building a hydroponic garden in the basement and switching out some uh, plugs with like Wi-Fi plugs. Right. Like that. That's it. That's you all I've it, done. Right? Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> Easy stuff. That's Nothing your crazy. Construction. Yeah. <laughs> So what made you yeah. decide to go into real estate was, I mean, we talked a little bit, I think, before we started recording, but what was, like, the main driving factor? Is it future plans? Um, Is it future, yep. you know, um, diversifying, I, I believe, not ask it. Yep. So I wanted to diversify and have something. And real estate is, you know, and I like design as well, so I just felt like it was, A, is a good match for me. Yeah. Real estate, relationship, communication, and all everything that really makes real estate strong. You yeah. know, I have it falls in the mindset. Keep and talking. I'm okay. gonna go turn oh, the okay. air di conditioning down real oh, quick. Okay. I just realized it had I like it. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm good. Yeah, so I went I wanted to do that and then um also was thinking about doing investment. Um so I wanted to flip houses, and then also I've been thinking about, you know, getting rental and yeah. multifamily property. So I thought, well, it was during COVID. We're in this COVID, you know, stuck at home kind of thing. Yeah. And, you know, kind of what we've been talking about, people are crazy. I have to have stuff. Yeah. Right. I want to fill my brain. I want to be active, all this stuff. So, I, you know, what What a perfect time to dive in getting my real estate life. Absolutely. And learning while I'm here <laughs> stuck. Mm -hmm. At home. Yeah. <laughs> so I just dove into it and got my license days. And that's awesome. Um, that's kind of what led me to diversify and um, kind of do something that works with my mindset. And then that long term, I do want to invest in houses. 
at it. Yeah, it's. I tell you, I I've really enjoyed flipping houses. I was gonna uh, ask you. That's why I'm gonna yeah, be my yeah. question to you. Yeah. <laughs> like, okay, tell me about the flipping. So. Yeah. So we I. Thus far, and I won't say that this will last forever, but thus far we've been really lucky. We had one house that was just a nightmare, and they should have disclosed things, but they didn't because they. Mm -hmm. it, I think we bought it from either Bank of America or Fannie Mae, so they weren't gonna disclose anything. They were like, "Nope, we've never been in it. Deal with it." As is, where is, and we lost money on that, but not much. Like right. a couple thousand after we'd had a lot of successes. Okay. But when we started, we bought. Um, my wife built a house like at the worst possible time, and uh, it was in a great neighborhood though. And one down the street came up for sale, and we just kept watching it drop. And I was like, "Okay, I've got to shut that off right now." So it dropped so far that I was like, "We can rent it for X number of dollars. Here's what it is." And we'll be good. And we got two tenants in there that were there until we sold the place. Awesome. Like probably four years later. Right. So they were great. Um, <laughs> unfortunately, that house uh, caused a divorce because they had lost everything. And then I think they both were just kind of mentally done with each other right. because of right. it. Um, but so we had that place for four years. And then when we went to sell her place, we just couldn't. Same reason that the other one went down mm -hmm. so far in mm -hmm. price. I was like, well, let's not like, you know, invest in that place to not have this one. We know what it can rent for because of that one. Right. We rented that one out every year. It turned over, but we always had great tenants, kind of weird tenants every once in a while, but still right. they all paid on time, all communicated. And then we bought a place in, um, in Hyde Park. And the only reason we got that one, because our offer was really low, was because we were able to, like, scrape together enough cash to buy it. Awesome. And fixed it up enough for people to live in there, got it ready to go. And um, so we had three rentals for quite a long period of time. Well, then my, you know, my son was about to be born. We were going to renovate our um, bathroom at our house. And it was just kind of one of those things, like, we don't know what's going on. Mm -hmm. And these have gotten a little crazy. Like, it was when our long-term tenants said so they were about to move out. Like, let's just sell it. Like, let's do the fixes that we need to on the places, and then let's just sell. So we sold out of all of it, made enough to, like, do the renovation, put a bunch in savings, and kind of just, like, okay, we're in a good right. financial spot here. And then we sold the place that we were living in, bought the big place, and that basically was our an investment. Like, we right. were living there full time, but it was a true investment, mm -hmm. which financially makes a lot of sense if you're able to do it because right. you get the nice tax break because you're living in it. It's yes. owner-occupied. So... We bought that one, renovated it, made great money on that place, and that allowed us to buy the place that we have. And so now we're in a place that we're not doing any renovation to. And I thought, this is the perfect time to screw up everything and start this again. <laughs> so uh, we ended up finding this pl uh, little bitty place. It's a, it's not little bitty. I shouldn't say that. Uh, it just feels like it. But on, what was it, 43rd Avenue? It's pretty, pretty busy road mm -hmm. in KCK. Yes, yes. I had actually seen the property – uh, from somebody who was wanting to sell it, and then they'd ended up renting it um, a few years back. But went in, and I was like, it needs paint, a countertop, and a couple of small fixes, and this place would be great. So we've had tenants that I just re-upped their lease, bought that about a year, year and a half ago, somewhere mm -hmm. in there. And then my parents actually had bought a duplex that they were like itching to get rid of. And so I bought that, and then I have a place in Belton that I'm still trying to decide if I'm going to sell it or rent it. But awesome. it was, I wanted to have um, six units by this time, but then with everything that's happened, it was just like, that's not going to work. Right, like, right, right. Like, and I, right now, I don't want to buy anything unless I see that it's a good deal. This place that we bought is super tiny. It's a two-bed, one bath, and like one big main room, and that's the house. Right. But it's on a lot, no HOA. It's like, we can, we can do good on it. Right, yeah. So, again, like we'll be so well into it that I might just – say screw it and refinance it and rent it out i don't know though we'll have to see don't I you think that I'm, I'm some of the podcasts i've been listening to birds in that because downtown area also west for mm -hmm. because moving out of the downtown areas yeah. because of because people aren't going to work yeah. downtown anymore, right? Yeah. Do, you, do you have belief in that? Yeah, so my opinion on that would be a couple of things. Like, I think there are definitely some city centers mm -hmm. that are going, like, not Kansas City, not necessarily an area like Denver or Boston, where the downtown is pretty well spaced out. There's a lot of people, but not a crazy amount. Right. But, like, you talk about L.A., 
20 million people in a county. Crazy. Yeah, almost 10%, like 7% of our population in one county. <laughs> right. It's insane. And it's like, one, right. you get enough humans around like that, you <laughs> see problems. Like, one of my favorite podcasts is the Joe Rogan Experience. I absolutely love it. He is. Oh, I, I, that, I have been one. I have not yeah. watched it. Yeah, he's crazy. Like, he's okay. a crazy man. But, but I I've love heard him. It's awesome. Yeah, it's great. Okay. And or you listen can to it. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I mean, and you can watch it on YouTube, too. It's just, okay. yeah. But uh, that's how I do it. Like, I rarely use YouTube to watch the video. I right. normally put it on because it's such an easy platform. Right. And I just will throw it in the car and hook it up to the audio. That's right. what I do. But um, but I like him because, like, he'll have, he'll, and this is going to sound ridiculous, but he'll have on, like, his friends mm -hmm. and just smoke and drink and have a loose conversation. And mm -hmm. they're saying whatever they're going to say that day talking about crazy theories and conspiracy theories and that kind of thing. But then he'll have on, you know, uh, astrophysicists. Right. He'll have on doctors. And he'll have on authors, like ridiculously intellectual people. Yeah. And then he'll have on his buddies that, you know, work at the comedy store with right. him. Right, he has to shift his mindset. Yeah. Like, right. <laughs> but he's a great interviewer right. for all of it, which I think is amazing. Yeah. So, but I watched that, and he pretty much, he has already announced it, but he – is selling his house in California, already has mm. sold it in L.A., and is moving to Austin, Texas, for exactly the reason that you're wow. talking about. Yeah, and okay. some of his buddies are doing that. Right. Like It's kind of a mass exodus mm -hmm. for the comedy scene there because he was basically like, if, you know, I can fly you in. You can fly sure. in to see me. Flights are cheap. Like, I'm not going to be around, you know, they've got a huge homeless problem there. Right. I mean, just not, not homeless like, you know, people obviously are down on their luck. Anybody that's homeless never chose mm -hmm. that. Yeah. Like, nobody moves out of their house, and it's just right. like, I want to yeah, go live in a terrible exactly. place. But it's like, but it breeds problems, and especially when you have 20 million people. Right. And a huge percentage of them are homeless. Yes. So that's the reason that he's moving, and I think that's going to happen. Mm -hmm. I also think that one of the biggest things that we're learning right now, the one, like, you can say positive or negative, it depends on where you stand on it, is it doesn't necessarily matter where you are to work. Right. Yeah, you could be out in the country as long as you have good internet and yep. a camera and a microphone, you can work with anybody. Right. So people want to have spaces yeah. that they enjoy being in. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, it's always amazing to me. Like, and you've probably had this experience where somebody will move from like a New York, an LA, mm -hmm. a San Francisco. I'm one of our uh, neighbors at our old neighborhood. They moved from San Francisco. They paid more for a one bed, one bath closet of a of an right. apartment than they did for their 4,900 square foot house. Right. They were like, what is this about? It's like, welcome to Kansas City, baby. It's the right. best market yep. ever. <laughs> <laughs> like, I mean, if you want to, yep. you know, move downtown, move to certain areas like Mission Hills and that kind of thing, sure. like you're going to spend a lot of money. But, but still in comparison to oh yeah. what's out there, it's nothing. Oh, yeah. Right. Like we sold the big house that we had. We sold for 935 I think. Wow. If that place was, I mean, if it were even closer to Kansas City, but if it were anywhere else, we wouldn't have been able to afford that. Right. Yeah, Kanye right. West wouldn't have been able to afford right. that house at certain times <laughs> in his life. I mean, it was just one of those things like, but it's Kansas City. Right. You can have yeah. it. So, yeah, it was. We could be getting a lot of people coming our way. Oh, yeah. Right. I mean, my uh, my wife's one of her uh, her former employers. They moved their whole corporate office here from, I think, somewhere in Atlanta. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Because they were like, and everybody came in and was like, what can I do here? And Kansas City is amazing anyway. Oh, yeah. And we have, gosh, our downtown area, the Crossroads, mm -hmm. the River Market, and yeah. Plaza, Westport, all of it, you know, is just North KC, you know, where yep. Chicken and Pickle. Yep. You live, have you been to Chicken and Pickle? I have not. I just love that. Yeah. So, anyway, we just have so much, um, you know, culture that's really awesome. And even like downtown Lee Summit and. Yeah. Oh, yeah, and they're, they're sneaky. Like, downtown Lee Summit, I'm glad you said it, because if you just said it, it's like, well, I don't – what do you mean? Right. Like, no, it's an – It's awesome. Yeah, it's a great little town or little area. Park over to the side. Mm -hmm. Go find a place that you want to be at. Great food, mm -hmm. live music. Exactly. It's fun, and everybody's – well, I can't say everybody's fine. But yeah. You know, most people in general. Yeah. Kansas City has kind of a reputation down to earth, mm -hmm. you know, and I think that's – yeah, so I had a friend yeah. come from Miami, and he was like, it was really weird to go to your town. Because <laughs> it was like, I felt like everybody was, they, you all had a plan. Like, you were all trying to get me, but you just weren't saying it yet. Like, no, that's just how everybody is, <laughs> man. That's hilarious. <laughs> but yeah, it's because, I mean, if you go to Miami, and Miami's actually, Miami is very pretentious in its own way. Right. But mm -hmm. 
especially in the way of money. It costs so much to be down there. And I think I've been three times, and every single time I go, it's normally for work, and I'm just looking around. Like, you spent more on your outfit than I did on my utility bill <laughs> right. for years. Like, how your shoes are worth more than my car. Like that's how I feel walking around yeah. that. Yeah. But at the same time, it, it's of the city centers. You definitely at least get like a calmer crowd. So mm-hmm. to hear somebody from that town where I don't consider it like New York or Philly or something right. like that, yeah. come to Kansas City and say it's disar- disarming. It's like, oh, thank you. I kind of like that. <laughs> Me too. I love it that we're yeah. like that. Yeah, I feel like Kansas City has gone through a real renaissance since Power mm-hmm. and Light was in. Absolutely. Because either – Still the same. Yeah. If you liked Power and Light, mm-hmm. it's great. I liked it when I was 21, and when I was right. 22, I was done. <laughs> yep. um, but that's where I met my wife, which is the most oh, hilarious yeah, right, part. You know, yeah, right. But every time I get I, – I got my, my value out of it, now I'm out. Mm-hmm. But it made Westport renovate itself, create itself it anew. It made all of these different areas around town – become something better than what they were. And so when people say, like, oh, I visit Kansas City at this time, like, that's not Kansas City anymore. Right. You need to come back. Totally different. Yeah. All these different. I just, I love River Market. Do you mm-hmm. ever go to the River Market? Have oh, you yeah. been to Tribe? Tribe's a little. I haven't yeah. been to Tribe. Love it. Yeah, my it's uh, fun. friend of mine who's been on the podcast talks about it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I go there quite a bit. I kind of feel like you just walked in. Like a 70s vibe to nice. it. Nice. Amazing, the tacos. Yeah. And, you know, you just sit. Yeah, I sit at the bar. At least oh, yeah. The overlook. Oh, it's Louis. Bar That's what I like to go. do. Yeah. I sit at the bar. <laughs> get a nice drink. Get in to uh-huh. hang out and talk. It, but it's a really good place. And the scooter. Have yep. you been sc- I haven't done it yet. So oh, Denver has them all it. over the place. They're so fun. Yeah, I just haven't been downtown that much lately. I mean, we live so Such far love. south anymore that, and with everything else that's going on. But yeah, I was there when they first put them in. And just laughed because I was like, I'm sure everybody's going to be super responsible. <laughs> I crashed. <laughs> yeah. Oh, did you really? Ago? Yeah. Oh, no. What happened? It was terrible. <laughs> <laughs> so funny. So we, we get on. We If we go downtown, mm-hmm. we get scooters so all over the place. We'll go from River Market down by Crown Center Union Station. Oh, area. wow. Yeah. I mean, we like take off. Right mm-hmm. then. Anyway, we're on our way back from uh, Power and Light and mm-hmm. head down back to the river. And I hit something. Yeah. I don't even know. <laughs> a what pebble. It, a pebble, <laughs> exactly. And I just went down, right? Oh, but it was, and um, I was so embarrassed that I'd fallen off, and mm-hmm. I fell right in front of him. And I was crashed right in front of him. Until <laughs> <laughs> I'm okay. All right. I'm good. Right. I'm fine. Right. I'm, I'm good. fine. I'm good. It's I'm just good. my head that's <laughs> bleeding. <Right. laughs> I get back on, and. Like, are you okay? <laughs> right? And I'm like, yeah, I'm good. I'm good. Right, I'm good. Let's, go. Let's not talk about it anymore. Right. Don't talk about don't, it. Just don't bring it up. Don't talk about it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then we finally we get to where we're going, get to Tribe. Mm-hmm. You're okay? I'm like, no, not really. <laughs> no, I need I, I need I ice. Broke a, I broke a rib. Yeah, I'll take a drink and also the ice that comes in that drink. Right. Put it in a bag, please. Yeah. <laughs> My ribs were, like, hurting. Oh, Big God, time yeah. the next day. I thought I broke. All of a sudden, it went away uh-huh. one day after about a week and a half in, and oh I feel man. great now. Well, that's good. I know. <laughs> you recovered. And I could <laughs> It was broken. I couldn't. Sneezing was painful. So painful and scary. Yeah. Right? I felt the sneeze coming on, and I would be like, oh, my gosh. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right. Like, this isn't fun. This. What do I have to do? What are the things I told myself as a kid yeah. would stop this? Yeah. So. I, I've only messed up my ribs a couple of times, and it was all – Either workout or you know right. sports related, right. and uh, I just remember the same thing. It was like when you you never think about breathing mm-hmm. until somebody's like, "Hey, think about breathing." You're like, "Oh shit!" Right. But when you mess up your ribs, and I just had like bruised. I never mm-hmm. had anything broken My or muscle. Or yeah, or something. I don't know what it was. But Man, you notice your breathing all, you do. The time, especially at night when you're right. trying to go to sleep. Like, it's crazy <laughs> how painful it is. That was my first experience. Yeah. Issue at all. It laughing sucks. was hard. Like, make you know, me laugh. Like, you need to be a very calm <laughs> couple very for stoic. several days. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, it's oh yeah. Those things. That's one of those things. that's like I know cities kind of fight it, but it's mm-hmm. so convenient and people love it so much they can't yeah. really do much about I think it. Awesome. Yeah, 
Yeah, the segways. I see segway tours. Oh, I didn't. I haven't. S- we don't have segways, do I have not th- seen. There's segways. a there's a segway tour that runs on the plaza. Okay. And the really? only reason I know this is because when you said you crashed, I saw somebody bite it hard on one of those oh things. Geez. Yeah, and they that could hurt a little worse too. It was well, and the way they fell. Okay. Free, like if there hadn't been so many people around them, right. like I have no medical training, so it was like <laughs> I would have gone over and been like, "That's an injured person. Somebody find somebody, somebody that's help. gonna do something." <laughs> But uh, but I was – it was on a manual cleaver, and I was going out of the plaza on a manual cleaver, and they all passed right in front of me on the crosswalk, mm-hmm. and I was like, well, they look like nerds. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and then they hit the area where they basically have to turn into the little concrete uh, thing and then turn to go into the plaza. Mm-hmm. Well, when they went there, I saw it happen. This girl hit her wheel on that concrete, mm-hmm. and that Segway just launched her, and she landed on her elbow and her oh. head – on the curb not like oh i land land on a flat surface right like my elbow went here and because of that my head went here like oh she's hurt bad yeah Uh, she did she did did? did? they made yeah they made him put those on so thank god but yeah that that looked like a broken shoulder broken elbow something i mean she went down hard but yeah there was a part of me was like i don't i feel horrible for her right i don't (laughs) feel bad about thinking that you look like a nerd though It's a segue tour. Everyone's together in oh, a yeah. line, like little yeah. geese, right, following yeah. each other. Yeah. Yeah. One of my favorite yeah. memes is this girl's like, yeah, my dad sent me this picture and said that he uh, was in a gang now, and it's like a bunch of dads oh, in khakis that have that are on a segue tour. Like, yeah, hardcore, yeah. man, hardcore. It's like Col- <laughs> yeah, Colorado. We're getting ready to go. We'll go out. We'll rent you know, ATVs, right, mm-hmm. and go oh, yeah. out. And just Definitely. No tours, Mm-mm. though. Can't. That takes all the fun out of it. You yeah. have to do Follow yeah. a guide. Yeah. On your four wheeler. Yeah. It's like that's why I have this. At five miles an hour. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Exactly. No, well, we thank you. K- yeah. We got to keep up with Karen back there. Yeah. We got to make sure that she's doing <laughs> Not okay. Do that. No, I'm the same way. It's like yeah. I just give me the thing. I want to get out. Oh yeah. And the only time I'm not is when you're in a city that like we went to um, a few years back. It was right before my son was born. Uh, I shouldn't say right before. It was like a year before. But we uh, took my parents and my wife's parents to Italy. And nice. we flew into Rome, yeah. and then we went into – we actually took a train to Florence, but then drove into the um, Tuscan countryside. Okay. And they had this, like, 1300 seminary that we stayed in. Mm-hmm. And then we went back to Florence and stayed there. So it was, like, three days, three days, three days. Right. And because it's Rome, like, we can't really access anything. Let's find the, like – Let's find the tour that takes you to the right, places. Right, okay, right. Yeah. Well, that makes more sense. Exactly. But yeah. uh, anything else, it's like, no, I'll find you're it. You're in foreign land. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Like, I, I'm but with you there. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, when you're just like, yeah, I, I don't want to be with ten people right. on a on the back of a horse that hates me or on the back right. of an ATV. No, no, it's not. It's not it's at all. all the adventure out of it. Yeah. Because that's like, what you do I'll those ahead. things for. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And it's nice so. to find, like, a local guy that can be like, okay, so if you're like that, go to this trail, this trail, yes. this trail. Yeah. Because yeah. you don't want to also waste your time and be like, oh, well, that one sucked. Now I just wasted half a day. Right. right. <laughs> that was no fun. Where yeah. are you going to Colorado? Uh, Breckenridge area. Nice. Yeah. Love Colorado. Try to go there often. Yeah. And, uh, had a few, <laughs> few trips out on the four-wheelers with the kids and yeah. stuff. Yeah. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. 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 It's, it's so, so beautiful. Oh, my gosh. It's my yeah. favorite place in the world. Yeah. I love Colorado. Yeah. Hopefully, I have a place. If I never move away from Kansas, I'll always have a home. Right. But I'd love to have a vacation. But the mm-hmm. summertime, Colorado in the summer. Oh, that's yeah. That's when I like to go. Yeah. Because I don't like to be cold. So, mm-hmm. um, it's beautiful in the wintertime, but I love Colorado in the summertime. It's like perfect. Well, you're in the, in the mountains, so you might get a hot day here or there, but for the most part, it's pretty right, nice it's, temperatures. It is. It's just like, wild. oh, it's hot. It's 85. Right, it's like, what, what's it in Kansas City? 109. <laughs> right. They're all literally frying. Yeah. With 85% humidity. Exactly. Right yeah. <laughs> no, when we went there, we went to the Breckenbridge area first. That was the first time we'd yep. been to Colorado. So we flew into Denver, rented a car, drove there, and my a family member of mine um, had a condo that was like halfway up a mountain, mm-hmm. and it was beautiful and i got out of the car went up the steps because you pulled into the garage and he went up the steps to their place yeah and i thought i was gonna die because my lungs oh, had never right. experienced that before the air was right. so thin i mean because it's like what 
in Breckenridge, there's a there's a like nine thousand is I'm kind sure. of what Breckenridge is, okay. and then we were up the mountain from there. That's right. So yeah, I thought I was gonna die. Like yeah. the fir- it took me three. We were there for a week. It took me three days for my lungs to adjust. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. We drove up Pike <laughs> last year. Pike oh wow. Pike. Yeah. It was so cool. Yeah. I, I can that imagine. was the first time I had done that. Literally, even even as you're driving, you're you're in your yeah, but there were people. There were people on bicycles. They were Shh. biking up it, and I was like, "That's just yeah. impressive." Yeah, and then they have a race every year, like with race cars. You know, they block off the crazy race, right? Mm. These race cars race up or down. I don't remember which it is that mountain, but like the year before, <laughs> taking off a dive. Off <laughs> the mountain. Oh right. man. Yeah, but oh my gosh, if you ever get it, you need to do it. Yeah. It's worth it. Okay. To drive up top of Pikes Peak. Heck it's yeah. I will not take a bike, though. I'll put it on top right. of my car. That's the only good it's going to do. It is crazy. Uh, yeah. You're, you're like this. It's right. These yeah. Riding it. It's like, are you doing this to like wow. win a prize? Like, do you get money for this? It's like, no, just to be able to say it. It's like, dude, <laughs> right. you know you can lie. <laughs> you can just say you did it. And everyone was Who's going to call you out? Yeah. Like, well, what's it like? Yeah, it's really tough. Let's go halfway up and take a picture, right? Exactly. Done. (laughs) Yeah, that's exactly what I do. Like, here we are. We're at the top (laughs) because I took my car, but I just have my bike in the background, (laughs) and then I put it right back on top. (laughs) Or someone else's bike because there's other people. Yeah, exactly. It's like, hey, just for one second, can I do that? (laughs) Yeah, there's no way. You couldn't convince me to do that ever. Like, I'll go on trails. Yeah, I like I I would like to be able to, like, be physically able to. I think that'd be amazing. Mm -hmm. But... It's not gonna happen in my lifetime. Long it would take. I can't even. Oh, to get to get prepared to do it. Oh yeah. A lifetime. Like yeah, more than a marathon. It is more than a marathon. Yeah. There's no. It's not because I at one point I could. I never did it. I've Mm -hmm. done half. I've ran the distance. Yeah. Right. Not even close. No. Mm -hmm. I think that is a. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. And Lance Armstrong calls it a- EPO. So, <laughs> <Right. Right. Yeah. laughs> like, dude, take it. If you're yeah, just doing absolutely. this for you, yeah. If Why you're not? just doing that for you, <laughs> that, was, that was one thing Bring that made on. me so mad <laughs> back in the day. Our drugged up guy was better than all their drugged up guys. I know. <laughs> I'm like, you know, I still love him. Oh yeah. Like I, right. I don't like how he attacked people for it, but I can appreciate. Like I can compartmentalize athlete. too. It yeah. wasn't. He was well. He was trying to like athlete. ruin other people's lives. Oh, I don't know about that part. Yeah, he was like going after I people. I wouldn't like that. Yeah, he was like, "No, you're it lying about it. It's, w- it's wrong," and trying to bury them because he uh, was Lance Armstrong. Right. But I, I can like compartmentalize that. that. Yeah. It's like, yeah, that's not great, but still, you were the best drugged up guy in, right. <laughs> in the Tour de France. <laughs> best drugged up athlete I've ever mm-hmm. seen. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and he had cancer. Come on, give him a little EPO. Right. He's fine. Right. <laughs> yeah, my, um, I my dad has a buddy. He's technically my friend too, but. My dad and him have known each other for years and years, uh, and he always he has to be in the mountains. So he was in Colorado mm-hmm. for a while. He moved to Kansas City f- for what felt like a month, and then right. he moved right to uh, North Carolina, yeah. and that's where he's been since. And so it's great to go with him because he knows everything about the area, lives in a place that's up a street that I don't know how he gets up it in his car. Um, but he took my dad one of the days that they stayed on a hike. They thought it was going to be an easy hike, and it was not an easy <laughs> hike. I mean, they were, like, a, a up against mountains and wow. stuff like that. But um, there's a couple thousand foot drop at one point. Yeah. And uh, right at the bottom is a golf course. And apparently there's, like, a certain part of the golf course that they just find bodies. What? Yeah. Because, it's I mean, it's not an easy trail. So people get on there thinking, like, oh, this is going to be easy. I can just turn around whenever I want to. And they're like, oh, no, I've got a two-foot ledge that I have to walk across that has no bar. Like, not OSHA certified. <laughs> and you just have to go across this thing. But it's like, oh, yeah. Like, 15th hole, we normally find a couple people. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Well, I heard when we were at Grand Canyon, when it was fun, we heard um, a lot of stories about people that they falling off. They're, well, they're trying to take cool selfies. <sighs> and I, you know, I have some selfies that are questionable out there. Mm-hmm. I'm getting all one of mine. Oh my gosh! <laughs> <laughs> well, it looks more dangerous than what yeah. it was. Yeah. Right. So, but <laughs> scary thing is, people are. Oh yeah. Dying out there to get a good selfie. Mm-hmm. Good selfies, right? good YouTube videos. 
Yeah, it's <sighs> that is the craziest is crazy. thing. And I guess it's a lot. I mean, it's mm-hmm. more than what you. I can't remember exactly the statistics, but it was um, more than we imagined. Yeah. It's like, oh, my God, that's crazy. And just for a picture of yourself. <laughs> right. Like, and again, it's kind of like the people driving up Pikes Peak. It's like, Photoshop it. Right. <laughs> like, Photoshop that you climb Mount Everest. Nobody's going to care. Right. Like, I- especially the pictures where it's like, you know, you're s- the people that are, like, sitting. Like, there's always the famous ones where people are, like, sitting on a rock that jets out above yeah, an entire uh-huh, town. Right, right. Like, why are you doing that? Right, yeah. That's the dumbest <laughs> thing I've ever seen. Like, what, to sh- have a nice picture? It's like, other people have nice pictures. Say you're that guy. Yeah. There's another one that's like a... I think it was a glacial deposit, but it's this, like, pretty round rock Mm -hmm. that's in between, like, two, basically, cliffs. And it's sitting there. It's like, one of these days, that's going to drop. Right. And it's going to be because you guys jumped onto it. (laughs) By the way, you're dropping onto a ball. One day. Yeah. Yeah, It'll give out. Yeah. And you'll die. And you'll be the person forever after known as the person who died because they wanted a picture. Oh. Yeah. And it's crazy. It is crazy. I I get selfies. It's easy with phones. Just go click. Got it. Mm -hmm. No problem. Do it all the time. And some of the. They do it for YouTube videos, too. They do. Yeah. I know. People jumping off I buildings know. and stuff, and they lose their footing, and now the YouTube video shows up on a very different website. Yeah. It's yeah. Not, it wasn't worth it. No. Right? Like you, you never get to see your own. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I yeah. never – the people that do that stuff, like, that are jumping around on top of buildings, mm-hmm. I never respect it. Like right. I know, y- I know that there are some people that are like, wow, they're brave. It's like, no, right. they're dumb. What's that called? It's called uh, – you know, the art of that, the – Parkour. Thank you. Yep. <laughs> Hardcore parkour. <laughs> yeah. Parkour. <laughs> now, I think it's cool looking. Yeah. But not on top of the buildings. No. I just like the. Do it know. on the street. Right. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. easy. Okay. And I mean, do it off of, you know, a building like that. Right. But you're not Spider Man. Like no. Uh uh-uh. Right. You, you don't have anything. <laughs> there's no. Like, you're not wearing a parachute. <laughs> right. Yeah. There was one guy that was apparently, like, that was what he was known for, was taking, like, these crazy videos and selfies. And he's mm-hmm. on the edge of a building, and you realize immediately what you're watching. Is he immediately is just he realizes like oh I am losing my strength, like I'm trying to take this picture and he's there for t- too long. Yeah. And he loses his strength, he drops. He dies. Mm-hmm. He was on top of a building and he's like th- he was recording a video and right. taking a picture, and you see it in his face. He realizes like I don't have the strength to pull myself up. Wow. You don't see him drop or anything. You just right, see him like fall out of frame. Right. You just know what happened there. Yeah. That's enough. Yeah. yeah. And again, it's like weird thing. It's like social media is so good for mm-hmm. business. Don't take crazy selfies. Right. <laughs> that, that's not good for business no, when uh-uh. you're not here anymore. No. <laughs> to enjoy the fruits of your labor. Right. Yeah. Instagram, social media in general, even like YouTube and some of those other platforms, like the more long form, it's really been weird to watch how people, one, have done really stupid things, mm-hmm. but how really stupid things have turned into big business. Right. They've turned into that. pretty mad. Like mm-hmm. there are people that – like the w- the one that's the funniest to me is like Instagram. Like, right. What are you doing? Like taking pictures of myself. How are you making money? Because it's sponsored by so and so. Like right. how much are you making? Three thousand dollars a post. Instagram world is dangerous. Yeah. So having a twenty one almost. He gets messages she gets from people like oh. Pay you three thousand dollars if like not even asking for mm. but and she's it's just yeah like no and she's got a she's added it's better than on to that but she knows people who have oh yeah right yep Be, and they get the money mm. that have been like just to hang out right mm-hmm. and not. Yeah, nothing yes. sexual, nothing right. weird. Yeah, right. Thousand bucks or whatever. <laughs> Out with them. But it's money. <laughs> but right. So when does that turn? Yeah. You know, to yeah. something else. You don't know these people. Yeah. Don't well, if they're don't developing a comfort level with you, and then all of a sudden it's something right. that's more secretive. It's like, it's yeah. You know, and she gets all that. We'll sponsor you. Mm-hmm. Need to be like. Brand. <laughs> that's not a like swimsuit no. brand. <laughs> <laughs> First <Right>. of all, <laughs> that's a no suit. <laughs> that's a no suit brand. Yeah, that's a different one. There, there, there's a there's a magazine He's with like a very <laughs> famous owner that just died. <laughs> Did he die? You have I heard yeah. that. Yep. Oh wow. Yeah. See, that's my news, yeah. right? Yeah. 
When did he die? I, th- I should I think know. it was a couple years ago. Oh. I think so. <laughs> I can't remember. I think it was a couple of years ago. Yeah, okay. he died and his, his daughter I took over. Remember. Yeah, I think his yeah. daughter actually, now that I say I that, had taken over for a while. Yeah, he finally got hitched and. The 20 year old? Mm. Right. Oh, yeah. Yeah. 20, 22, whatever right, it took. Right. Yeah. Looked the exact same as you would assume. Whatever the mental image is in your right, head, uh-huh, that's who he married. That's it. Yeah. 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 I, that guy was a fascinating human. But yeah. yeah, it's, it's gone from like stuff like that to some of this. I, man, I don't know. I don't know what's going on. I am so happy that like I was a ridiculous human when I was a kid. <laughs> when I was a teenager, like I was one of those people that was. Very level-headed, very responsible to the public. Right. And then oh. in private, it was like, I'm going to do anything I want. Like, I wasn't drinking or smoking. Like, it was just like, I'm going to be up late. I'm going right. to go mm-hmm. do what I'm going to do. And I can't even imagine. If I had a video camera or, a, you know, a, uh, the ability to put a camera on my phone when I was that age. I was crazy. I yeah. have such amazing stories. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Mean, oh, my gosh. Because I just adventurous, yeah. right? Life was fun, and I just yeah, it, it happens. That's but that's when you're supposed to make them. Glad em. to be alive. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah. My dad says today, still, if there's danger, where we'll find it. <laughs> <laughs> still says it. Nice. He said it a couple months. Ago. Nice. Well, you know. <laughs> no, that's what I am. Deal with it. Yeah. yeah, but if you had a yeah, but if you had a camera back then. Oh, oh my gosh. The worst I, thing ever. And I'm so glad we didn't have. Uh, Cell phones. Yeah. Well, because at least I did. Um, I didn't but have cell phones. Yeah, the first Glad. phone I had, <laughs> I had um, actually <laughs> the first phone I phone I had really funny story, but the second phone I had was kind of my main phone, but it was just like a little T-Mobile. It wasn't right. the brick. I never had the brick, okay. but right. I had one that was like the generation up from that. Mm-hmm. Like rather than the green light, this one has a blue light. Right. Like ooh, ooh. fancy. <laughs> Um, but my parents always made fun of me because it was when T9 texting was around mm-hmm. and I have my thumbs are double jointed. And so I could shoot out a text message without looking wow. and act, like reach the whole phone and just go through when T9 texting left and I actually had to get the, on the keyboard. I've hated it ever since. Oh, that's funny. It's like anytime I get right. see an email come through, I'm like, I'm going to wait till I get home because I can type on that real fast, but I've got, right. I fat finger it on the phone. Interesting. But yeah, back then I had that, and I had that one for a while, and then like maybe my senior year, junior year, I got a flip phone that had a terrible camera. <laughs> but yeah, it was camera immediately exactly. clear that Alex should not have a camera on his phone. <laughs> like this is a bad idea. And then every every camera after that. Luckily, right. again, luckily I couldn't upload it to Instagram, right. or upload it to Facebook, or accidentally upload it to one of those places. But much trouble. When I was in Funny. college, it was the same kind of thing. It was just like I, I was I never drank in high school. I didn't drink my first semester of college. And then that wasn't true anymore. Oh. Like <laughs> <laughs> and then after my first semester of college, it was like this stuff makes things fun, <laughs> except right. in the morning. But yeah, so that was me in college was just having fun, having fun, except for when I went to Mizzou for the first year or two, for the first right. year. Then you were bored. Yeah, then I was bored. bored. Yeah. yeah. Still drinking, but right, very important. Right. Yeah. <laughs> By yourself. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I had a nice patio outside. Go out and chill out. It was great. Yeah, yeah ex- except that for the first couple of months, it was great. Right, right, yeah. right. Yeah, but again, like it's got to be weird for you, too, because when you're doing your brand consultant thing, mm-hmm. you have all these companies that are there. It's like, one, you're representative of them, so you have to keep yourself way up here. Yes. Like, pretty much everything that I do, my broker's like, just don't kill people. Right, right. Like just you're <laughs> right. you're independent. You're yeah. fine. Just don't don't do anything too stupid. Um, but I feel like I've got a lot of freedom. But when mm-hmm. you're representing, especially a large company, right? I mean, you have to be careful. You have to be you, uh, know, yeah. you have to be on your A game. Right. But then you also have the deal where it's like, okay, what can I do to not make the mistake that every company makes, even if you're trying to do a good thing? Right. And you have to be the one to go. No, 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 no. We can't. Right. I think a lot of it's common sense. Hmm. So. But there are a lot of people, you know, like you were talking about with your wife and everything. Make stupid mistakes. Yeah. So it hasn't been really hard for me because I don't get opinionated. Mm-hmm. I, keep, I keep it positive. Yeah. And it's about my family. And it's about just like what I like. So yeah. I haven't had an issue. With it. You know, it hasn't. I haven't really had to restrict myself, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah. So that's been good. But I have. I have seen and had to talk to people. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like Do that. Yep. It 
is. Yeah. Somebody can screenshot Someone's it. Come it's out there, you don't know. Yeah. Right. Yeah. No, we uh, and that's that's the weird thing for your job is because it's like, okay, well, even if I'm great and I mm -hmm. do everything right with my company, and I create, you know, the biggest example to me is like, if I try to do something that's right, that is the right message. Right, 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 right. Gotcha. But mm -hmm. I. But it's not perceived that way. Right, it right. gets right up here with right. everybody in this room. Yeah, I gotcha. Yeah. And that's like I, the ultimate example was the um, I think it was Kendall Jenner's Pepsi commercial mm -hmm. in the Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. She went up like from the protesters' line and right. gave the cop a, a Pepsi. Oh, right. And the it's backlash yeah, yeah. that came from that, it was like, no, she like it's she promoting peace. Right. It's like, oh, you think it could be sold with Pepsi? Yeah, exactly. It's like, oh my god, what kind of crazy town saying. am I living in? It's true. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Even though you're on the up and up and you're doing it with full integrity yeah right then i bet what you believe is mm -hmm. in full integrity yeah. might be offensive especially in well in today's world too like the media and the the megaphones people have for their voice mm -hmm. it's like somebody gets on there and mentions something like if you think about like if beyonce and i don't know if she said it or not but like if beyonce gets on her hundred million followers and super fans. Right. If she got on there and that commercial and she was the first person to be like, you know, that was an insane commercial and it's awful and racist and right. it's all of these words that right. you don't want to hear. Mm -hmm. If that's what happens, 100 million people yep. now agree because yep. they are so lo no, such loyal followers. Yes. And true. to me, that's the crazy And then all thing. of a sudden, made a stupid mistake to put. Yeah, the trying ultimate, to like, do the somebody's right. going to. We need to fall back. So. Mm -hmm. With that, good luck with that. <laughs> Thank you. I'm sure it's going to be super easy. <laughs> That's why I like real estate and stuff online. <laughs> like this is why I like this kind of forum too, because you like you just opinions out. Yeah, it's, it's nice. Okay. Yeah, it's nice to just talk right? about it. Yeah, one yeah. on one. I haven't awesome. had a sing. There was only one time since I started this, and mm -hmm. I've probably I got close to 70, 80 hours of podcast now, but. I had somebody on, and it was actually the only time I've had three people on, and immediately I shut that down. I was like, nope, one-on-one -on -one from now on. But it was me, my buddy who's come on here several times, and then uh, a friend of his. They came on. The guy was incredibly intelligent, nice guy. But I made a comment about the fact that one of my favorite comedians, like, and I hate what, what he did and what happened to him, right. but I was like, one of my favorite comedians is Louis C.K. I do not want to talk about him. Oh, I didn't, I'm sorry, I didn't realize that was a, a big deal, and he just immediately, like, kind of got, like, well, let's take a break, right, take a breather, right. push, pa I never really push pause unless it's like I need to use the bathroom or something right. like that, but push pause, and he, w I was filming it in my basement because I didn't have this place yet, we're going upstairs, he starts up, and you can't see people when they're, unless they're through this door, and I tap my friend, I was like, right, <laughs> like, I have no Weird. Struck a chord. I didn't realize I was going to get yelled at for saying. Right. Like, I'd like someone you liked. Yeah. Well, just, and again, I even said, like, I know he's, you know, obviously there's some bad stuff that he did. Right. And he's paying for that now. With, right. You know, right. Right. Getting shut down. So it was like, dude, you c we can appreciate people even if they make a mistake. Right. Even if it's that kind of mistake. Right. <laughs> and, to, and to just appreciate the fact that somebody else appreciates. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You like him? I don't. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's good. Yeah. Right. It was like the O.J. Simpson thing. We can thing. still be friends. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Not to the degree, but it was kind of like the O.J. Simpson thing. It was like everybody compartmentalized. Like, you have to be able to do that. Yes. Yep. Like, O.J. Simpson, you know, ran over 2,000 yards in a 14-game season. Right. He's an absolutely amazing yep. running back. Wouldn't really trust him to be in the same room with me. No. But a great running back. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Right. So can't take that. Can't change that out of it. Nope. Right? Uh -uh. He was a good athlete. Yeah. It's like, we, we still talk about it. He's still mm -hmm. in the record books. Yeah. Never going to people right <laughs> <laughs> not a good guy no don't no. want to be his friend no right. no don't don't i don't it's not that i even want to be friend. his friend like when i hear people that like you know when you hear interviews of people running into him i walked across the street that dude terrified he's a giant human being <laughs> that has killed right, people right. yeah and my right. favorite thing is like well he was found not guilty like and then he wasn't <laughs> and Have you he watched the whole t on Netflix? Documentary deal. Um, I it's pretty fascinating. I can't remember if I wa I've watched so much on him that I mm -hmm. I probably saw something, but right, maybe not. Sure, yeah. Maybe not that. It's, it's but it's definitely possible. I watched the show that they did with Cuba Gooding Jr. playing him. 
Oh, on yeah, Netflix. I saw that too. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yes. yeah I thought I they did that. a great job. Yeah, he did an awesome job. But this was like showing all the food, actual food. I think I did see that. Yeah. 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 We have a weird curiosity with stuff like that. In I this like country. documentaries. Yeah. Oh, I'm a huge fan. Yeah. Anything biography, mm-hmm. I wa- probably it's really watched interesting. all of them. Yeah. I just want to know how their minds work. Yeah. You know? It's mm-hmm. interesting. Well, and it's so what weird, was too. your childhood like? No, <laughs> yeah. I think because I feel like people are born good. Mm-hmm. I really do. And um, I think the uh, environments that they put in, the circumstances, mm-hmm. how, they're, how they're raised, how maybe they are received, all yeah. these things. You know, it, did they have the freedom to be who they are as right. a person, or was that squelched? Right. right. Some people. By all those things, I think that um, kind of for good or bad. Right. Right. Yeah. Well, I think that, and I think this is especially true with athletes, um, and you see this a lot with like boxers and fighters, mixed martial artists. Like sometimes being in those environments, mm-hmm. like going to practice and having a focus, a center mm-hmm. that you're working towards. That's probably saved lives. Right. Because especially when you look at, like, some guys from, especially, like, I think mixed martial artists, um, a lot of football players, mm-hmm. like some of these just big, brawling mm-hmm. humans. Right. It's, like, probably good that we allow them to get in a cage yeah. and beat the – Have an outlet. Yeah. Yeah, right? beat the brakes off somebody. It's, like, because if they didn't do that to them, they mm-hmm. might have done it to somebody else. Absolutely. And a lot of those guys are so big and strong and they're so well-trained. It's, like, they're – basically just killers waiting right. to happen yeah. that's not a negative it's just like right. that's what your training is like yeah. you didn't train martial arts you know so that you could you know just not throw a punch right. you you're wanted. restraining another human yes. being yes and it's like thank god like that's one of the things i worry about with them canceling all the sports it's like i get it breaks but my heart too. yeah these are athletes that need that man like they need it bad they do. They yeah do. that's their yeah that's like Right. You know? oh. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Take the it pain away from the artist. It would be. Yeah. Yeah. You have to have. Mm-hmm. I think so. Hopefully, all that changes. I hope are so. allowed to watch again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Instead of the fake fans in the background. That's been a. W- it's been a funny thing and a weird thing. Did you see the? Uh, oh man. Um. A weekend at Bernie's cutout. Yeah. Oh no, I didn't see it. No. Yep, they had Bernie it. back there. Uh, <laughs> yeah, behind yeah, the plate. I saw some of the cutouts. I missed that yep. one. Yeah, Patrick Mahomes, uh, and I think close to him was Bernie. I uh, thought that was amazing. I wish they would have put the funny. two other guys right behind him. Yeah. But, yeah. yeah. yeah the yeah. social distancing while watching sports is interesting to me. It's like, because you know how they end, right? Mm-hmm. Game ends, and everybody goes to the same central area. Right. <laughs> right. Like this, You can do as much as you want with the seats, but they're still there. Right. But, and again, maybe they just say, like, well, when you're up, wear a mask, whatever. I I know enough football fans to know that most of them are not exactly thrilled about the uh, at the prospect of. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's not. Well, it's uncomfortable. Yeah. (laughs) 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 At the time when you're expelling air the most, you're like, okay, I'm sick of this. (laughs) I've had people tell me. I was in a restaurant. I was walking through, and the wa- the the hostess asked me a question, mm-hmm. right? Well, I my voice doesn't carry. Yeah. You put a cloth over the top. You can, and yeah. she's like, "What?" Yeah. And I pulled it down. She was How dare you? <laughs> horrified. <laughs> <laughs> Ma'am, could you? Uh, you got two choices. I can answer you your right? question or not. <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, and the opposite of that is like we had. I went to. Uh, there was a day that I hadn't eaten out at a restaurant in months. At least I felt like that. I think maybe we went somewhere, but I it, I had not been out. Like normally, like for lunch every once in a while, I just like to go out by myself, just have something. I hadn't done it for months and months since we got back from Mexico, and I finally was like, I can't stand the taste of my own cooking right now. I'm the only. Right. I'm cooking myself. Like, ah, right. yes. I don't I want another can of soup. Too. Right. Like, so I went to uh, Wally's and Lee Summit, mm-hmm. and uh, I ordered, like, salmon or something. And they have the poly- – like, they have all – some of their booths are shut down. Tables right. are spaced yeah, out. Yeah, like, yeah. they do a really good job. I go up to the bar, 
bartender's there, and the rule was you wear it when you're using the bathroom or coming or leaving. Right, yeah. But as soon as you get there, you can take it off. Okay, that seems very reasonable. So get there. And I was talking to the bartender, and she was like, hey, here's a story. Because I was saying, like, eh, it's not a big deal. Like, wear it in. I literally went straight here and mm-hmm. took it off. And she apparently had, like, three people came in that were painters, and they just flat out refused and then start yelling at them, and they left when they yelled. They got on social media and started – down, like trashing oh. them, giving them poor reviews right, and everything. Dad. And um, she was like, yeah, and then we get fake phone calls all day long, these guys. Do you Why? not have a life? Oh, like, my gosh. You got kicked out of one restaurant. I've been kicked out of more bars than that. Right. Like, what are you talking <laughs> about? <laughs> and they weren't, you know, you got to play. Yeah. It's like right. you literally have to wear it five minutes Just do maximum it. Right. the whole time you're in there. Right. It's easy. Not a big deal. The only time I don't like I have to like go to the grocery store or something, and I'm in there for a long time. It's hard. Well, and because like I can't breathe really well out of my nose, mm-hmm. and so that's my only complaint is just like I'll still do it, but right, I do it. Right. I yeah, do it. I don't like it. Yeah, right. Yeah, I don't like it. I'll say it and admit it. I don't like when. Yeah. But I do it where I'm supposed to do it, right? Mm-hmm. And yeah. Play along. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I have to. Of tell. course. Did you hear in Wisconsin that? They're requiring government to wear the mask on father at home. Oh, uh, Snapchat should come because out with something that just puts a mask on I you. Know, I know. <laughs> like, that's not fair to the. They say it shows. Idiocy too. <laughs> it's like you're at home. Immediately end mask is off. It's not right. gonna matter. Right. Oh my gosh. And it doesn't really show support of the cause, just because that doesn't mean that they're supporting the cause. It means right. that they they value their job. Yeah, exactly. So they're gonna wear the mask because they were told to wear yeah. the mask during Zoom calls. Yeah. That's what. Yeah. Right. I know. It's crazy. <laughs> I would do it, though, <laughs> if they told me to. Well, yeah, I mean, if your job depends on <laughs> right. it, you have to. Right. But right. that's just a power play. That's ridiculous. I know. Isn't it crazy? You have yeah. to look it up. God, I had to double check it when I heard it, and I was like, oh, okay, I got to I have to go that one out. I'll look it up, and then I'll immediately just keep that, and then I'll look up. I'll just add the word meme to it and see how many people have just throttled oh, right. that. I bet they yeah, have. Yeah, just made fun of it. It's have. like, here's, here's what yeah. government does, pe- yes. ladies and gentlemen. Here we go. This so is what we are. I'll take our Kansas City rules. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. Th- yeah. As soon as you see something like that, okay, it's like, okay, okay, okay mask good. is fine. Right, yeah, yeah, I'll good. wear it. <laughs> yeah. The only t- day I got mad about it was I uh, was going to like quick trip and I just needed like a water. Mm-hmm. And I looked and my, my wife was uh, taking her uh, kid to his uh, five year doctor's appointment and she took both masks. <laughs> I was like, okay, I guess I'll. Trip. Do you guys have <laughs> right. a fire hose or something that I can grab? <laughs> I need something. <laughs> yeah. But uh, that was the only time, though. It really hasn't been that. Long. Right. Yeah. As long but as you have one with you. Yeah. 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 And the the thing that's been so weird outside of the rest of the weirdness, but the thing that's actually like kind of it shows probably more than we want it to is all of the shortages of stuff in mm-hmm. stores. Like randomly one week there was no like diet pop. Right. There was no like obviously the big one was toilet paper and paper right, towels. Right. 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 Mm-hmm. And. That was, I think that was the strangest thing when we were in Mexico and coming back. Because we went down there when you heard about it, not really a big deal. Okay, so you're April? Um, I, mean, uh, I mean, in February. February, yep, February? Yep, late February. Right, February. Yep. Right. It was like, it's, it's overseas, it's here. You know, everybody's kind of like, okay, well, probably mm-hmm. we know it's going to come. Right. Be reasonable, it'll be fine. And uh, so when we left, we're on a normal plane, tons of people. Right. And nobody's wearing a mask. I think maybe two people that I saw in any airport were wearing mm-hmm. masks. So we get down there. Nobody's wearing mask. Nothing. And uh, I'm like, this is great. And then all of a sudden, we just started hearing stuff. My parents came down with us for the first seven days. And then my, uh, my wife's family came down for the last ten. And we were on a flight leaving that was leaving Merida. It was one day after all of their stuff. All right, it was easy. And... My parents leave, and they get back, and I get a call about five days later from them because we've been texting back and forth. It's insane. It is absolutely insane. Because you were removed from it. Yeah, we were totally removed. Right, I mean, right. and we're not, like, Merida is kind of the main town, but.
but it's inland, mm -hmm. and about 25 minutes is a town called Progresso, and that's like the beach town. Okay. And then from Progresso along the Gulf, there's just one road, one road that's between the towns and the and the ocean and the swamp, okay. and that's it. So that's the road we're always on. Right. And we are probably 17 kilometers from Progresso. Okay. In a house on a beach, and there's not even like we have a neighbor that never was there. And like one other person, right? So you're just yeah, just uh, completely on our own. And the yeah, other yeah. person is two lots down, yeah. so we don't see anybody. Right? Really. Yeah. So it was great. Nice. But <laughs> even then, we're removed. Right. So we don't even see like what Progresso is doing or what Merritt is doing. Mm -hmm. And then it started getting crazy. And then my other family comes down, and they didn't think they'd even be able to make it. They're worried they were going to cancel the flight, uh, leaving. Right. And they were like, as long as we can get to the beach, we don't care. So right. they made it. Everything was fine. But they kind of came in like this is, this is obviously getting weird. But I don't mm -hmm. know what's going to happen in ten days. They stayed, and I got a call again from my parents like seven days before we leave, and they're like, you need to order, you need to get online and order everything right now because right. we can't yeah. find anything. So we missed all of that. Yeah. We missed everything going to the store. Yeah. 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 And so then, like, when we left, they canceled every flight except the one that my family was on, so we had to yeah. switch on to that. Yeah. You want to talk about craziness? That flight was maybe a third full, and we landed in Houston International Airport. Have you ever been there by yes. chance? Yeah, I have. Really busy. Right, yeah. Constantly Huge. busy. Yeah. No one. I would be there. Ghost town. Zombie yeah, apocalypse. Yeah. Right. They could have filmed the Scary. zombie apocalypse movie. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so we land there, and then the flight to Kansas City was oh God, maybe a quarter full. Wow. I mean, we had – I took a picture of it, and one person thought I was taking a picture of them, so they had this mean look on their face. I was taking a picture in the front of the plane. There's like maybe two seats, like two rows that are filled, yeah. and it's only like one, like two people allowed in the three seat right, row. Right, right, right. And then behind us, it was like a pretty big group was in the back, mm -hmm. but that was just in the back. That was like maybe five, six rows, and the rest of it was our family. Whole Southwest plane, seven thirty-seven. So it was the whole ride. I mean, it's kind of uh, weird. It was like weird. Yeah, I they hope the plane everybody had crash. Yeah, exactly. Everybody, right. nobody had ma the the flight staff had masks. We didn't have to wear them. Which is good because we didn't have them at the time. Right. Um, but the flights, uh, the attendants wore masks, and then they only served water. Like, well, that's not a good flight. Right. Why would I – flying back from vacation, I'm sad. It's Give right. me booze. Yeah, Come on, yes. people. <laughs> if you serve water, why can't you – Exactly. Booze, yeah, right? yeah. Not water to fan. wine, right? Come right. on. Let's yeah. make this happen. Like, I'll, I don't care what you have. <laughs> Whatever. So down that and all that. But we, uh, when we landed in Kansas City, the strangest thing for me – wasn't the flights. It wasn't Houston because that was just kind of like, oh, well, this is weird. Mm -hmm. From KCI downtown, that stretch of I twenty nine, we passed less than fifteen cars. That's wow. It was insane. And I wasn't. I don't, never saw that because I was in my house. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah, and, and this was middle of the day. Wow. Like this was three o'clock, two o'clock. Fifteen cars. That's crazy. Yeah, because I started counting because I'm like, there's no one on the road. So there's yeah. One. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Well, during that time, it's like every day, everyone was, okay, what's going to happen next? Yeah. Right. What changes are going to happen? How's our world going to change? Everything was so like up in the air, uneasy, yeah. and you start what's realizing going humanity. On. Yeah. How you do. crazy we are. You do. Yeah. It's wild. Yeah. It still is. I don't know if we've seen the worst of it yet. I don't know. I think we're going to start seeing some interesting repercussions of all this mm -hmm. coming up here in the near yeah. future. Yeah. When you tell people to stay at home for two months, it's like, okay, you're going to get rid of your supply. Right. And then you're going to have overstock. And that's going to be gone. And then people are now, like, going back into factories to make this stuff. And, I, like, I don't know if you've bought toilet paper lately. We you had to for well one of our places. you can only buy one. Yeah, one. Well, at our price shopper, you got one. Yeah, you one. You get one at a time. And it's, like, the worst toilet. Like, it's not what yeah, they're telling I you. Know what they use the right. same it's packaging, but they give you the single-ply nonsense. Yes. It's like, yes. it's yeah, like. like what a commercial building has. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yes. it's yeah. Bad. It's weird. It's it is weird. Yeah. And I do think in the coming months we're going to see some crazy. And the kids, you know, I worry about oh my grandkids. Yeah. Like with you and your kids and the ho all that homeschooling. Then when they do go back to school, how life at school is so different. Yeah. Like six feet apart with the mask on. Mm -hmm. How are they going to create real connections? Yeah. We ended up keeping our kid. He w this was supposed to be his kindergarten year. Yeah. But he's young for okay. the class. He was born July 11th. Their cutoff is August 1st. So mm -hmm. we're kind of in that gray sure. area. Yeah. And we, like, last minute, but we held him back. Right. Like, I mean, he's 
this kid is incredible. He's like reading. He he buy these like uh, my big book of whatever insects, mm -hmm. um, animals, whatever it is. Right. And we buy him that. He loves like the planets one because he wants to be an astronaut. But they're 80, 90, 100 pages. Right. And he smokes them, wow. reads them, and really intelligent. I mean, he went from like not talking until he was like two, two and a uh -huh. half, to just going crazy. Like just loves. Taking to, oh it all yeah, in. exactly. <laughs> just staring at you like I know what you're doing. <laughs> like, that's terrifying. Like, what have you heard? <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> but but he like we kind of looked at him and it's like you know maturity level is one thing. Like mm -hmm. you know he's probably been it would probably benefit him to hold him back a bit. Mm -hmm. Uh, just one more year, but we weren't thinking that months ago. It was like, no, as soon sure. as all this stuff clears up, he'll be in kindergarten, just like we thought. And with this happening, I called the school, and a friend and client of mine answered the phone. And when she left, she made another call to me, and we had a different conversation about what they were planning on in the school district. Uh. It was like, oh, yeah, he's staying home. Right. Like, he, he will let him have fun for another year, and right. we'll do it next year. He's yeah, obviously and if he doing needs good. A bump ahead a year eventually yeah. along the way you can do that exactly right yep yeah, so. if he needs to skip a year fantastic mm -hmm. whatever works for him right but this year was just not play yeah it's just mm -hmm. crazy Sad. yeah mm-hmm but it's like that's so much of school it's like yeah it's the learning stuff of course yeah but you know social intelligence oh, yeah. that you learn in school yeah too mm -hmm. right and they're missing out on that yeah and they're just so. in front of a computer yeah. That's the crazy thing. I know what it's like to be in front of a computer. And then some that have to stay at home mm -hmm. without um, adequate parenting. Mm hmm Those. Yeah. Right, because are they going to be able to learn? I feel like yeah. potentially we're going to have a generation of adults mm -hmm. who are struggling. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I think, and that's going to be bred from a lot of the things that we were talking about earlier, and that's mm -hmm. going to be bred from a situation like this. Yes. Like, yeah. and hopefully they kind of figure it out. But I mean, you know, like last year, my niece's boyfriend's like senior year of college. No celebrations. These right. people. I know. Yeah. It's depressing. It's like you just you made a major accomplishment. Right. That what that they look forward. To yeah. That, right. That yeah. Monumental point life and mm -hmm. then they don't get to have it yeah so my daughter's in forensic um speech in mm -hmm. college oh yeah so she quadruple qualified for nationals nice. you know, last year right uh -huh. and she was they were two weeks from nationals in florida and devastating oh yeah yeah right. just did all this work and qualified mm -hmm. and now it's right. it's gone don't get to go yeah. Heartbreak. Yeah. It's, yeah, I, again, it's one of those things, like, I understand the arguments. I know, I, I do understand too. the other side, I and, and I definitely, right. you know, like the mass thing, it's like, is it annoying? Yes. Am I going to do it? Of course. Yep. That's not a problem. Right. But stuff like that is just the most just depressing sad. I mean, stuff. how can you not be sad about it? Yeah. Right? I get it. Sad about it. Yeah. <laughs> it's still depressing. Right. Well, it's like, and imagine <laughs> being the person. Happen. Right? Yeah. It didn't happen. Yeah. I wish we were just the Economy was great. Economy was great. I, I, I don't our economy was great. It, the society thing might be a different well, thing. Well, yeah, that's true. <laughs> that's why I backed it up. That's yeah. why, you know, I followed that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> economy real quick. <laughs> I get it. Right. Yeah, that was just, when I, when I heard that, I was like, yes and no. Right. We got to talk right. about yeah, this. Yeah, <laughs> just follow that. Economy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Society, it's crazy. Yeah, exactly. God, yeah. Go interact with people and get to know <laughs> humans again. Talk to people. Enjoy yourself. Yeah, yeah. The weird thing, like, what it's doing to friendships is strange beca w because we're almost com becoming two separate people, our mm -hmm. online persona and oh, our actual right. persona. Mm -hmm. That's true. Yeah. Like, that's you rarely true. meet somebody that's like, oh, yeah, you're exactly mm -hmm. like what you thought I right. thought you would be online. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's okay. true. Yeah. And a lot of people have the envy, the social media envy yeah. of, like, Nope, probably not. That's <laughs> not yeah. Maybe not. Yeah, right. there are a lot of football players that are great at what they do, and their home lives are a wreck. So yes. don't don't worry about yeah. it. It's all good. Yeah. yeah. See, the the glamour of some people like it used to just be Hollywood. Now it's everything online. But it's like 
it must be nice to be one of them. It's like, right. have you heard about some of these people's mm-hmm. lives? These people are insane. Right. What are you talking about? It's so true. Yeah. Everything looks perfect. Mm. Yeah. People look perfect. They're not. Yeah. <laughs> I was in acting. I started my junior year of high school, and it, I got my way to a, a scholarship, and was gonna. there was actually a chance I was going to go to New York and um, – do this uh, television and film school, mm-hmm. and I just decided like uh, an actual degree is probably best if this doesn't work out. But I was really thinking about yeah, it. Yeah, that would have been awesome. Yeah, and yeah. I really enjoyed acting and I loved it. And now I look at some of the stuff that they've had to deal with. Like, no, mm, uh-uh. right. Now, like you think fame is cool until you're famous. That's true. Yeah. Yes. And anybody that's like, oh, that. poor them, they have millions of dollars. It's like, yeah, but their mental health is suffering. Money doesn't <laughs> create happiness. No. Doesn't. No. I think we get that ideal yeah. thought in mm-hmm. our head, especially when we're young and getting ready to go out oh and, yeah. you know, have a family and everything mm-hmm. for the first time. Especially if you're from a small Doesn't town. Doesn't create happiness. Oh. You know, I talk to you know, my son, he's right in the middle of building his mm-hmm. life with his family. Yeah. And it's, you know, it's hard. Yeah. And what does he do? He um is in uh, at a salvage yard mm-hmm. in a county line auto parts on it. Okay. it is. Mm-hmm. He's up there and he's moved his way up. He didn't he was gonna he was gonna go to college and path. Yeah. He, ended up being path. he mm-hmm. was a big baseball player. Gotcha. Burn out his shoulder. Yep. Had to rethink, okay, you know, how what do I want to do? Because he was D one headed to oh you know, man. majors, ninety five yep. mile an hour fastball yep. at sixteen. Yeah. Right? That's pretty good. So <laughs> Two shoulder surgeries later, yeah, that didn't work out. He's got a crazy, awesome mechanical, thing, just mm-hmm. like my dad, and so nice. cars are his thing. Cars, so he's on this path of just being as much as the ladder at this at this yard, and he hopes to be. Gotcha. Actually, he has cool. a team under him now, so he's he's doing that, and he's happy. He loves it. And That's doing awesome. Really great and good money life at his age you yeah know, he's doing great and looking for a second house right now and nice. all that but you know money stress, good. all that stressful though, right? Just, oh yeah you know how uh, I just have live below your means yes that will help a lot create happiness yeah right? yeah and i think that's, that's and i and i didn't do that, mm-hmm. right oh that's tough i'm like I, i'm not telling you that because i'm smart right yeah <laughs> now just live that. the other side <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Uh, I didn't do that, mm-hmm. and I learned from it. it yeah. Was hard knock. So yeah. I can't mm-hmm. don't do that anymore. And but that's not uncommon. That's right. super normal. Stuff, and I see it, and then I'm like, uh, oh, no. <laughs> I got to pay for it, too. Uh-huh. Right? <laughs> yeah. My credit card says that I can pay this off in well, 35 years. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. Oh, and it's it's so it really is tough, especially when you've been doing that, and you're like, you know, I see the money like this, right? I see it. It's right yes. over there. That car looks really. Good. Oh. I wouldn't even need to make a payment on. That. No, we're we're the same way. Like we have to constantly like we talk about our finances constantly mm-hmm. because if we good. don't, we'll slip. Right. Like we both know it's like, man, we're doing really good. Our mm-hmm. financial plans look awesome. We've got this going, this going, this going. We're like we could no, right. no. <laughs> No, we got to we got to raise it's now. True, now we I shove know. more money towards retirement, yes. different accounts. Yeah, Taking we, the Dave Ramsey path now. Oh, are you? Oh yeah. 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 I just like get free, right? Mm-hmm. Way to go. Yeah. And build wealth, mm-hmm. you know, not stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Yeah. It's the stuff. Fun when you first get it, but then it's like, eh, you know. Yeah. A car just becomes a car. a car. Right. Yep. It's just a car. Yep. So. Yeah, I. uh we don't, we're definitely not following the Dave Ramsey thing. We both don't like debt, which is hilarious because we have debt. Right. <laughs> but when you look at our net worth, it, there's such a separation between mm-hmm. the amount of debt that we have as opposed to the assets that we have. Right. And actually, like, y- you know, income-producing yes, assets. Yes, And so that's well, been kind of our thing. Well, like how can you can't really prescribe completely Ramsey path, although he's mm-hmm. – then you're investing like you are. Yeah, yeah. Right, I think that's Because you have to different. save up so much that's to buy that. Different, right. Yeah. Yeah. But everything's in our plan. So, you know, when these houses that we have now, the rentals, I mean, I have 30-year notes on all of them. Mm-hmm. So it's like, okay, well, I'm – so 
yeah, I'll be fine. Right. Like, even if I take that long to pay it off, I'm still going to have zero debt in retirement. And I think that's the biggest thing. Absolutely. You don't want to have any payments in retirement. No. Utilities, cell phone. That's, yeah. Right. Because then yeah. you can live on very little. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. It's amazing yeah. to see, like, our income now mm -hmm. versus if we paid off all of our debt, what we would need. Like, oh, not right. want, need. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, we, we jacked up the plan a little bit because uh, – so we've been kind of going through the strategy of um, we worked out with UMB a plan where we have a HELOC, but then they guarantee that when we finish a property, they'll appraise it, give us 80 percent and we move on. Mm -hmm. So but they take they then pay the HELOC back, right. whatever that amount is. So it's its own separate loan. It's been great. It's a great program. Right. Um, and then we decided to uh, buy a house in Mexico when we were down there. Oh. And renovate yeah, that to that rent part. it out. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we bought one down there. We and I told my wife, I was like, it's gonna take fifteen days for you to mm -hmm. like I know you enough to know like this this is a plan for you because we talked about it for years. And um so we're down there and we actually bought one. They cut the price in half after we toured it. They'd had it on for like I think four months okay. and they kinda talked to their agent and they're like, Hey, just FYI, like if they want to buy it, we were gonna drop it anyway. So like we just we need this place gone. We need it gone. And so he told us that and I was like, Yep, that's not it wasn't even the one that I wanted right mm -hmm. before that. I thought it was an ugly thing until you went inside and it was really neat. Um so yeah, we ended up buying it. That was a complicated process. Because you're buying in another country. Yep, and there's right. no loan. Yeah. So we had to have enough in savings mm -hmm. to not only pay for it but also pay for the renovation. Mm -hmm. But it's like Merida's the it's always listed as like either the first or second safest city in North America, mm -hmm. and the only one that oh. it's behind is Quebec City. Wow. Yeah. So everybody okay. thinks of Mexico is like, ooh, it's dangerous. Like, no, right. that part is this is the Yucatan. Mm -hmm. Like, it's not. Yeah, I've talked to somebody that lives there that was from here, lives there now, and yeah, talked about that mm -hmm. same thing. Yeah, pretty awesome. Yeah. Sounds like. Yeah, it's it's a neat place. Mm -hmm. I mean, it gets hotter than. Right. during the summer so we'll definitely be back here um but yeah that's kind of what our plan changed into and we figured there'd be something like that yeah like, but eventually we'll just sell our house here have the house at the lake have the house there yeah nice. the time so Are but you again airbnb it yeah, yeah 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 we we uh ended up finding an architect that's really well known down there mm -hmm. and he's been great to work with. like probably one of the most impressive people i've worked with here or there right and he is putting plans together they're doing a 3d model now and then he handles the renovation which is nice like all their architects are basically the contract for the home builders too so we're having him do that and then once that's done we'll airbnb it go yeah. down there cool yeah excited I bet. <laughs> I would be too. yeah 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 that's nice yeah, we talk, We always talked about it, but it was always going to be on an island. Do you know where in Cancun you were Isla Mujeres is by mm -hmm, chance? I do. We wanted to build on there. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. then it was like island, power, hurricanes. Yeah. yeah. Um, ma maybe not. So with Merida, it was like we didn't. We knew immediately that we didn't want to be on the beach. Mm -hmm. As crazy as that sounds, like with me, I love seeing water. Yeah. But having a house on the beach is so crazy when it comes to maintenance. Yeah, because all the salt. Yeah, yeah rust mm -hmm. everything out. Yeah. All any metal thing is sure. going to be gone in a year, mm -hmm. and then the painting is just going to be. Instant. So Merida's, you know, inland helps with the hurricanes. Yeah, just you know, kind of a little crazy town. Nice but view. Um, not necessarily. So if you brought up a street view of Merida, mm -hmm. you'd be like, why would you ever want to move down okay. there? Because they're all. It's literally just a flat line of houses. And it's just whatever your entrance is. Okay. Like, and they're all, oh. most of them are flat against. Very few have like courtyards. Okay. And, uh, and ours is very similar. So if you look at it, you're like, that's weird. But the properties, like ours is like 33 feet wide, mm -hmm. but it's like close to 200 feet long. Oh, wow. So it just goes and yeah. goes and goes. And within cool. that, like they've got courtyards and oh, they, nice. you know, pools yeah, and stuff like that. Interesting. Yeah. So it's, it's weird compared mm -hmm. to up here. Right. Just it's like different architecture. Yep. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty neat. Like, you kind of build the paradise inside your footprint. Yeah, I know. That's what I'm picturing. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. but it's pretty neat. Yeah, We're, that sounds very cool. Yeah, it's probably going to be like two years before it's done because yeah. of all of this stuff going on. Oh, but I know. <laughs> Close everything down. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> yeah. So, when are you uh, looking to get, like, into the actual investment side? Is this an immediate um, thing or are you going to wait a while? You know, within the year. Oh, really? Nice. Yeah. I'd like to do something within the year. That's good. Just jump right in. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's what I do. Yep. Right. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That'll be fun. I got. Yeah. I get teased by some of. 
friends because I was like, that'll be fun. Yeah. Let's do it. Let's do it. Yeah. It'll be fun. It'll be great. <laughs> we'll figure it out. Yeah. Why not? So, um, yeah, I'll probably within the next year, I'll do something. I, I really want to flip a house and sell it. Yeah. That's not ideal time to do mm. Um, It's really probably not ideal time to buy a property. It's all the prices, right? Right. And everything. But yeah. But the flipping might be better because I'll be buying something that um, needs some updating. And mm -hmm. So I just want to do it. I want to have the experience of it. Yeah. And then kind of decide what I liked and what I didn't like about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's, you never, it's the ultimate you never know until you do it. Right. You, and I thought, like, I was around. My dad was a floor installer. I was around construction all mm -hmm. my life. I thought I knew so much. <laughs> And I knew nothing because, like, this place that we have in Belton now, this tiny place, I mean, we ended up opening the walls. We ended up, they had a false ceiling and then mm -hmm. the actual roof. And so we took it up to the roof line so that oh it nice. would look as big yeah, as possible. Sure. And, I mean, just one of those, I'm really glad I bought it where I did because if I hadn't bought it for that, I would have mm -hmm. lost money. Yeah. It's like, I where wasn't going to pay Belton? anymore. Uh, I guess so I it's a just, it's just north of Lock Lloyd. Oh, okay. Yep. It's, yeah. a, it's Holmes Hills. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Holmes Hills. Yeah. yeah. Area. Yep. So it's just a little kind of crazy place where they don't really care about building codes, it seems sure, like. <laughs> but, <laughs> but we've had, I mean, it's been excellent. The guy that's working for me um, has been there every day, just one thing after another. Mm -hmm. But it, if I showed you the pictures, you're like, that pictures don't even do it justice. Such a gross house. Are you going to sell it or rent it? I'll probably try to sell it just okay. because we've had, with COVID and everything else, we've had some quote unquote losses, mm -hmm. um, paper losses that I think I can take advantage of them to flip it. Right. And I won't have to pay taxes on that game. Oh, good. Yep. So that's probably what I'm going to do with this one. I was planning on immediately refinancing and renting it. Right. But I was like, man, if I can get this sold this year, I'm going to be in a real good spot. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. If you get it done, if I sell, because everyone's selling. Yeah. What? Well, right. I, I just talked to my brother, who, again, is a way better agent than I am. And, uh, like, what is it? And I told him where it was, showed him the pictures, and I told him the price. And he was like, ah, I should probably. Like yeah. your attitude. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, here. Manifest for that. Do you have a client? Do you have somebody that's looking? <laughs> That'd be an easy sale. Give them a deal. <laughs> so do you actively buy and sell right now? Yeah. Have you yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah, I just finished up with a, another client that I went to high school with um, awesome. last week, week before. You know, it's not one of those things that I go out and I'm actively like right, supermarketing. Or anything no, like that, uh -uh. Right. I, I did that for years, and I liked it. But I'll be honest, the thing that I got the most frustrated with was other agents. Okay, I've heard. Yeah, yeah. And it's not like somebody like you that's new and there's mm -hmm. questions. It's like I, nobody cares. That's right. fine. That's mm -hmm. easy. Like these, you know, the agents that just have not adapted to their new environment mm -hmm. are the ones that drive me crazy. Right. You know, I had one that was telling me that they couldn't get their client. This was a couple years ago. They couldn't get their client to sign the paperwork because they didn't have email. I was like, how old are they? <laughs> oh, they're like 50. I was like, they should have email. Right. Come on. <laughs> Just, rid I mean, and it's, that's a it's minor thing. Stuff. Yeah, right. and that's yeah. a minor thing. But, I mean, I've been yelled at by other agents, mm -hmm. you know, that just, I, I try to explain to people. It's like, understand this is a contract. This is a legally binding contract. Right. I know realtors sometimes get the, you know, the the bad comparison to, you know, oh, well, this is a part-time job. Mm -hmm. Whether that that's true or not, mm -hmm. this is a legal document. Yes. This is like anything else. This yes. is like divorce papers. Yes. This is like you buying a car. This is everything. This is a legally binding contract. You cannot welch on it. Mm -hmm. If you do, there are consequences. Yes. That came clear to me during yeah. like, okay, this is it's easy mm -hmm. for things. It seems like this things could be wrong. They could yeah. get you into trouble. Oh yeah, huge trouble. Right. The way you list a property. I yeah. mean, One mistake mm -hmm. and you're out ten grand. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you yeah, violate. Yeah, it's a little overwhelming. Mm -hmm. It's like I want to know everything. Yeah. You know. And well, and then we'll talk. You know, like next year, or the year after, and you'll be like, how are some of these people allowed to keep? It? How is this possible? Yes. And we. <laughs> and they don't get in trouble. Mm -hmm. Like. Well, most of the time, no, and I have a huge problem with that. I would too. But mm -hmm. like, but then there are also some frivolous stuff where people that are reporting things that think it's a problem mm -hmm. don't realize that it's not a problem. Okay. And right. um, I uh, was talking to an agent recently that had this happen, and they, <laughs> they had an offer on the table. They accepted it. Mm -hmm. And then another offer came in the next day, 
because uh, they didn't the people had seen it the previous day before it was mm-hmm. accepted and that offer was 10,000 more than the other one and the lovely thing was it was cash so no appraisal wow. I and so these people were like oh, if we had just waited right. another right. couple minutes uh, whatever and uh, so my brother's like well there's one chance and that we can do this what is it like we have in the contract that they have three days of deposit to check okay and he sent him a text on the fourth day and was like, have you deposited the check? No, they haven't yet. Immediately sent the cancellation order. And, it, and the agent called him, called his broker, reported him to the Missouri uh, Real Estate right. Commission. Uh-huh. And it's like, report me all you want. Like, that's The contract says. That contract right. says that. Right. Once you do that, you are in breach of contract. We have every right to cancel. Right. Done. $10,000 cash offer accepted. Nice. But it, t- it takes some... Knowledge. Some strength and some knowledge to do right, that because you, I mean, you right. are going to make somebody real mad. Mm-hmm. And you have to be able to handle that. Mm hmm. What's yeah. that? You have to be able to handle that. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. That, yeah. That pushback from somebody else. Yeah. 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 He's, he knows, like I said, he knows his contract so well that he's been reported several times. They always come back like, yeah, that's what he said. Wow. But that's what the contract says. I mean, it's right there. I had someone, it might have, I think it was in a podcast because I just film all mm-hmm. the time. But they suggested read the contract out loud every day, like, mm-hmm. because that contract is so important. Yeah. And you need to know it. Yep. Right, as a have to know it. Mm-hmm. It's just not fun. Yeah. But you're going to head that way. Yep. You know, and uh, like know the contract, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it was the – Weird one for me. We ran into this issue, and this is probably boring. <laughs> ran into this issue when I bought this, um, I bought this uh, house that we're working on in Belton, and the issue was that um, they had discovered termites. Okay. And so it wasn't. They weren't in the walls. They were just in a in a wood pile right next to the house. And I was like, okay, well, I just need to get it. Um. So they got it treated, but in the contract, it's really the wording is real weird because mm-hmm. it basically says, basically like. Termites are a completely separate issue than everything else that can possibly be requested. And so if they find termites in the contract, it stipulates they have to repair it. Okay. In the um, um, resolution uh, of acceptable closure of uh, acceptable whatever. Anyway, my brain's going right now. But it doesn't state that very clearly. Mm -hmm. And so I actually had to write in the contract like, Per contract, you must do this. No other repairs needed. But it was one of those things that was the only thing that I could request. Right. It, you know, they had basically said in the contract that, like, they won't make any repairs, but the contract itself stated that you have to if termites are found. Right, and termites were found. Yeah, and termites were found. So I just wrote it up and, like, that's what it says. <laughs> and luckily they were fine, but it was right. one of those things, like, please don't be a ch- <laughs> but, Like, this is going to be aggravating. <laughs> right. But just but a lot of people would have missed that. Oh yeah. Yeah. Yep. It's understanding, right? And yeah. Yeah. I even called. I called my broker and my brother, and I was like, "What do you think?" Like, "Oh, we've never run into that before." Okay. Well, try it. See what happens. And I mean, I called KCRAR, and they pretty much verified that that's what it was. But it right. was just kind of terrifying because yeah. it's like, can you word this a little easier? Right. <laughs> so everybody's on the same page. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but that's I bet okay. that stuff comes up. I mean, not that exactly, but yeah, things that are you know, because contract wording. Mm-hmm. Not super familiar with it. Yeah. Or like you were Make saying, uneasy. just read it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to become familiar. <laughs> I've been scared enough by, you know, the things I've listened to. I want to do it the right way. Yeah, of course. Right. Yeah. Like, well, that I have, that I'm working on. Yeah. Well, and it's, I can. it's good to have a good reputation with your clients, and you'll do yes. that. But it's also a really good thing to have a good reputation with the other agents. Yeah, right. Like this mm-hmm. house that I just sold for the guy, or just um, helped him buy. You know, I knew the agent. Like, oh, this g- she called me and was like, "Thank God we know each other. I'm tired of dealing with people. This is gonna be easy." Yeah, mm-hmm. it was. We had, they had a great house. And repairs and oh, that's and nice. But uh, but yeah, so it'll be good. Yeah, awesome. I'm excited. Cool. It'll be very cool. If uh, somebody wants to get a hold of you for real estate. Help. Um, or any of your other pursuits. <laughs> <laughs> Yoga, branding, uh-huh. or real estate. Exactly. Good conversation. Yep. Then um, they can call me okay. at 816 804 
1-800-273-8379 or they can email me at lori at worthlivinghappy.com. Thank you so much for coming. I really Thanks, appreciate it. Absolutely. Yeah, awesome. Cool. All right, okay. we can take these off. I'm sweating. <laughs>